702 remaining in the opening quarter along with Bob Kessling on the sidelines and Dave Rowe. This is Tim Brando. Happy to have you with us. Our Bell South SEC game of the week. South Carolina, its second possession, leading by three from the 37. Anthony Wright making him think, setting up in shotgun, now coming under center, Paul Beckwith. Lofts one for Kerry Hood. That's a tremendous play by Hood. He became a defender, knocking Martavius Houston free from the ball after he had claimed a, what appeared to be an interception. Yeah, well, if the safety doesn't come over and play the quarterback on this play, he's running all by himself. You see how he had beaten the corner? You see he came over and knocked down Houston to, enter, to keep that ball from being intercepted, but a good heads-up play. You've got to challenge the defense. Martavius Houston has had an outstanding season to this point and has played both the safety as well as corner for Bill Oliver, the defensive coordinator of the Tigers. His pass is tipped. Could have been picked. Ryan Taylor, number six, hit it. Let's go down to Bob Kessling. Tim, you get a shot of Shane Vernon and his broken right thumb. They might have done it two weeks ago, but he really finished the job against Mississippi State. They thought he'd be out three, four, maybe five weeks. He was back to practice on Wednesday and in uniform on Thursday. Whether he'll play today, we don't know. They have a soft cast on that hand. He wants to play, and Carolina, he's their emotional and defensive leader, but he's not on the field yet. Yeah, he grew up in Tallahassee and even considered the possibilities as a youngster of playing for Auburn. He wanted to be in this game desperately. Anthony right now out of the pocket. Finds Hood. First down, South Carolina. What you just witnessed is why Anthony Wright has all of the attributes of a Damian Craig, perhaps not his senior savvy. That's exactly, that's the only thing he lacks. The pocket crumbles around him. You see him flushed out, strong side. Now is he going to run? He looks downfield, sees Hood come open, and look at this, just throws just a perfect pass. Hood just tiptoes down that sideline. Oh, boy, I wonder what could have happened if he could have stayed in bounds and gotten his balance. But great field position again for South Carolina. 25-yard gain. The ball at the 38 of Auburn. First back through. Jacob Bush, sophomore from Jacksonville, Florida. They had hoped to get him on track today. Brad Scott is in search of, in search of playmakers beyond Anthony Wright. Well, he certainly is. He needs one at the running back, really. He needs one to step right up. They thought Boo Williams might be that guy, but he hasn't. But look for that play that we just saw a lot today. It's a quick hitter because the linebackers of Auburn are so quick to read. They flush outside so quickly, they think they can run, as you said earlier, tackle to tackle against Auburn's defensive line. You'll see a lot of counter and misdirection plays from South Carolina on the ground today. Quick pitch. Hamburg stopped at or behind the line by Dorsey. And you get the, well, the image of not only the size but the speed of Charlie Dorsey. Well, I, can, I played nose tackle for a lot of years. I can tell you it's tough to control the center and then slide off that block. And what Dorsey does is he gets in there, uses those big arms, and slides the line so well. He's a big guy at 6'2", about 285, 290, but he slides and has great speed. Three wide receiver set for the Gamecocks. Hood comes flanked to the bottom of your screen. Third down five. Wright's pass. Almost picked again. Well, he's living dangerously. Antoine Nolan and Ryan Taylor have had opportunities at picks. In fact, so has Martavius Houston. Well, they say he's not big enough. He's only five foot eight, but he plays like he's six foot two. Look at this break on the ball. Just bang, just puts those feet down, just comes right up there. That's one of the matches that they think they can take advantage of today, South Carolina does, because of the height advantage. But that little guy plays like he's six foot two. Steve Florio, who is seven for seven, will try to roll the dice and hit a 50-yarder this time. Out of the hold of Penn. Slight angle right. And he hooked this one. Had an up leg. The first miss of the season, but it was a 50-yard try 
for Florio and Auburn will take over in good field position really for the first time today well but what you really have to look at for South Carolina they're getting scoring opportunities they're taking advantage of, of the mistakes of Auburn the field position mistakes so they have tried to capitalize now let me tell you something about Damian Craig he is the last guy in the world to panic he does not panic out there he doesn't make bad decisions he's always in control and he is a fireball and uh, Anthony Wright always communicating with his receivers on the other sideline. Craig's pass is caught. Austin Bailey up near the 38-yard line. Homer Torrance, number 25, the corner. Junior college transfer from Itawamba over there to make the stop. And here again is Bob Kessling. Tim, one thing Terry Bowden told us before the game, when they go to their eye formation sets and then they jump into the shotgun, they're going to try and catch South Carolina miss a line. They have not showed this this year. Their eye formation then go on to the split backs in the shotgun. So watch that trying to catch South Carolina miss a line. Rusty Williams dots the eye and the pitch is into the boundary. Well, you have to be pleased if you're Brad Scott and Wally Burnham at these reads being made by his defense and Shane Burnham leading the charges. He's the guy that makes sure that the Gamecocks aren't misaligned. Well, I'll tell you one thing. You talk about a model of courage and leadership. That young man is it. Last week, they think he broke his thumb early in the game. His coach, Wally, said, hey, I saw him shake it all game long, but he would not come out. And he has an operator. He's got two screws in the back of his thumb. Yeah, is that is that a smile I see behind there? I think he's re really happy to be out there. Third down and four. Craig gets the screen out, but the pressure has something to do with the incompletion. Beasley, the intended receiver, by Sylvester Sly Miller, really came through free. Well, when you get in that screen position, what you want to do, you're kind of in no man's line, land. And what Miller did is he just pressured, just kept on coming on Damian Craig, and it forced an errant early throw. This Auburn offense has not gotten untracked in this game. They're having to punt yet again. Jared Holmes' his third punt. We still have better than three and a half minutes remaining, and John Eric Sullivan this time drops back deep for the Gamecocks, standing at his 20-yard line. From the 17. Now, you know, he was shielding that. He was shielding the sun, and the officials drop a flag claiming that he, in fact, had called a fair catch. You did see the arm go up. He was only shielding the sun. Well, but again, yeah. the official makes the only call he can make. Well, there's, there's no shielding the sun move. If you put your hand up, that is a fair, fair catch signal for the covering team. The receiving team. Aster Sizemore is accurate. The fans don't believe him. Brad Scott's a bit perplexed. He should have had better field position, but Sullivan did make a mistake. Right now, South Carolina's defense the story. <laughs> Well, what happened on this play? Watch the shading of the eyes. You're going to see Sullivan there. He's going to put his hand up to try and shade the sun. And what he does is that is a fair catch signal. Now, the whistle's blown. It's a delay of game. It's only five yards. I don't doubt that he was trying to shade the sun. But to the recovering team, the covering team on the kick, that's a fair catch signal. Yeah, because they obviously let up, and the official's accurate to make that call. Could have cost South Carolina about 30 yards in field position because he had plenty of room. Yes, he did. This is a big series for Anthony right here. He doesn't want to force a mistake. He's gotten away with a couple potential interceptions. And they run off the left side again with Jacob Bush lowering his head and burrowing to about the 14-yard line. Among others, Jimmy Brumbaugh, junior from Keystone Heights, and Ricky Neal, number 50, collaborating to make that tackle and you're, you're right I mean Anthony Wright has thrown really three passes that could have been intercepted this is the first time that he's been in a danger zone with field position yeah I would look for him to maybe use that little roll out of the pocket he's so dangerous when he rolls out of the pocket strong or weak side and has that run pass option second and seven pitching it to the wide side of the field and Hambrick up to the 20 yard line 
Troy Hambrick had an outstanding day against Florida late last season, and they really felt that he was the best back after contact and trying to break free and, and have some potential big gains. To this point, they have not seen that potential fulfilled. No, they haven't, but I'll tell you, he's a strong back in that first play when he broke through that tackle and picked up that extra six or seven yards. That was a huge play. They, there's none bigger than this third down conversion, third down and about one and a half to two. Double tight end as Trevon Matthews and Trey Pennington are in the game on third and a yard. First back through, it's Bush. I don't think he got it. Quentin Reese, oh. the outside linebacker, comes up. You know, short yardage situations were the downfall of South Carolina a week ago in Starkville. Boy, this is smash mouth. Watch Reese 86 get in there, right there. Bang, boy, and you see they just stand him up and down he goes on the line. They're going to have to punt the football. Boy, you, you want to take and run this football, but you played, your defense has played so well as the clock kicks, ticks down under two minutes in the first quarter, you don't want to give Auburn field position. And they're going to get it right here. Clifton Robinson dropping back deep as Courtney Lovett prepares to punt it away. The sophomore sensation from Germantown, Tennessee. Nice boot and a fair catch called for by Robinson at the Auburn 37-yard line. 129 remaining here in the opening quarter. And the eighth-ranked Tigers get... First down and 10. Beasley and Sinke Pennington now in the backfield. Play fake for Craig. Here comes trouble and down he goes. And a late flag comes down in an area where holding could be called. Corey Atkins with his second sack, helped by Cecil Caldwell, number 96. Boy, and Atkins is on a mission, and so is Caldwell on this play. And they may even compound the problem by a holding call late inside the line. But they are flat out coming after Damian Craig. Talking it over. Size more. Well, you'll see number, you'll see Caldwell 96, and look at Sylvester, Corey Atkins 58 come after. Caldwell on this side, you see Atkins come up from the strong side, and I believe it was Caldwell who got the hold. You saw the jersey getting pulled back on him. This is one of those rare opportunities for South Carolina in their own minds to be the more physical of the two teams on the field on a given afternoon. And we've seen that come to the forefront already in this game. Oh, yeah. Big down, second down. It's a down where usually Damian Craig just hits one of those Karsten Bailey shots going down the sideline. Goodson, right up the middle. And a first down over at midfield. Now, if it's not Karsten Bailey that gets you, Tyrone Goodson will. He surely is. Arturo Freeman and Lee Wiggins there to make the stop. And you know what? Most receivers hate to go across the middle. This is in the slot. You're going to see him cut across the middle right there. Most receivers hate to go across the middle because they know that safety's coming. But Tyrone Goodson is one of those big play men in the middle. 20 yards on the pickup. Last week, he had his third straight 100-plus yard receiving game. Five catches, 149 yards against Central Florida. Blitz from Burnham. It's picked up and Craig has time. Incomplete. Wiggins covering Tyrone Goodson. Shane Burnham was coming up, but Auburn picked up that blitz that time. Boy, and they did pick up the blitz. They stuffed it on the line. I think that ball may have slipped out of the hands of Damian Craig because the ball just kind of floated out here. It's not a typical Damian Craig delivery. Second down and 10 coming up. Craig now three of six for 35 yards. You just, uh, you know, you're float flirting with danger when your offense doesn't keep scoring and and Craig has been shut down. You know, oh, yeah. you know he's going to get his moment. It's just a question of when. Setting up the screen. Beasley, and there's plenty of room. Very close to a first down. Perhaps a yard shy at the 41-yard line. Homer Torrance, number 25, made the tackle. And this is not a screen that you usually see, a middle screen. Usually it's to the right or left. But look at the drop of Damian Craig. Look at the people after him. Now he just has to find his receiver, Beasley, has to pick him out. And now he picks up those big blocks, get to the outside, use that speed. Third down and a yard to go. Well, we witnessed what happened with 
Brad Scott's offense on third and short. Auburn is minus a quality inside runner. What do they do on third and one? Beasley will dot the eye. He's a converted tailback. And he's hammered at the line. It'll be very close. I don't think he got it. He had to make it past the 40-yard line. Inside the 40-yard line, I think he got stopped short. Yeah, ben Washington having a little tete-a-tete -tete with uh, Beasley as he gets up. A little whooping going on. Well, look at these dark shirts. They're going to surround him right there. Bang, he gets hit in the middle. That's Hutchison, the freshman. I think he's going to be short. And you know what? If I'm Terry Bowden, I go for it. Yeah. He's got to do something to get his team juiced up a little bit now. They are 0 for 4 on third down, Auburn. Well, they'll obviously get their first try on fourth down. A timeout may be forthcoming here. Well, you see Craig walk all the way over to the sideline. I think that's a pretty good call. They're going to call timeout. We've come to the end of the quarter. He needs no timeout. That's a freebie. When you play 15, you get to wait to the second quarter. Absolutely. <laughs> Back with the second quarter in just a moment. It's now, this is a big call right here. Telly Embry is in at fullback. And he leads Beasley for a first down. Inside the 40 to the 37-yard line, Lee Wiggins comes up and runs support to make the tackle, and the Auburn drive is alive. This is a power eye formation. You see 73 in the backfield. That's Simmons. He's going to lead that play. There's no fooling on this play. You're going to tell him exactly where you go, and it's just big man on big man football. Let's look at the first quarter stats. Uh, total yards, South Carolina getting the edge. Uh, neither offense really untracked. Uh, South Carolina did not take advantage of quality field position but uh, Auburn unable to get anything on the ground yeah, two yards rushing in a quarter of football that's not typical not even for Auburn Craig looking on the deep post for Bailey touchdown Six yards, the strike from Craig to Bailey. And I think Kevin Brooks just misjudged the jump. Because it's down the middle. He's got one-on-one -on -one coverage deep in the end zone. And look, he jumps early, comes down, and the ball goes over top of his head. Damian Craig yeah. pretty excited about it. Yes, he is. He says he's as comfortable with this team as he's ever been. We chatted with him earlier in the week, and you can see why. This is a much more mature quarterback, and when you got a Bailey that can beat you deep and a Goodson that's a great down and distance receiver, you have reason to feel good about it. Damian now with his eighth touchdown pass, and Bailey has been the recipient four separate occasions. Well, Bailey's their go-to man, going deep on that post pattern. And I just think Brooks just judged it wrong. He was in good position, but Bailey, you got to credit him, great concentration to look that ball in. Don't forget, coming up next week, we'll be back again here in Columbia as the running cats, and I don't mean Rick Patino's basketball team, I mean Tim Couch's football team. They come in with their new look under Hal Mummy as coach and Couch at QB. He's thrown for 17 touchdown passes this year, so you make your plans to be with us as the Wildcats go end-to-end -end against the Gamecocks. Check your local listings for the Jefferson Pilot Sports Station in your area. Another sellout here in Columbia and a scoring drive of 203, the fourth down conversion, obviously the catalyst, and then the quick strike to Bailey shortly afterwards. Well, I think that was a good call by Terry Bowden to kind of get some momentum in his team. His team played awfully flat in that first quarter, and he just turned around and said, boys, we're going to juice it up a little bit here. Made that fourth down conversion. Got him back, got him a little bit more under control, and then he goes for the big one to Bailey. Jared Holmes will kick it away, and Boo Williams is the deep back for South Carolina at the goal line, number four. Beautiful kick by Holmes. They don't call it the hedges, but it's certainly in the bushes, and it will not be brought out. And the Gamecocks will take over at the 20-yard line. You know, that's about a 65-yard uh, field goal, <laughs> if, I, if my memory serves me right. That was quite a kick. Let's go down to Bob Kessley. 
You get a shout of Jim Peterzak, who have one of the offensive linemen for South Carolina. He's another one of the guys that's injured, and that really takes a lot of their flexibility in the offensive line. So Reggie Baker, who is a senior now, will flip-flop, but again, it's going to hurt the rotation today for South Carolina and their offensive line, and so depth in the second half especially might to play a key role in this for Carolina if they can drive the football. Yeah, he's a redshirt freshman. They're very high on his dad. Peter Zach's father was a reserve offensive lineman for nine years in the NFL with the New Orleans Saints. You know you're getting old when <laughs> guys that you covered in the NFL have sons playing in college football. Absolutely. Four wide receiver set for Anthony Wright. Lofts one, caught by Hood. For a first down at the 31 yard line. Boy, did his offensive line, did Anthony Wright's offensive line give him time? The one thing they want to do with him is make him make quicker decisions. Now, this is stampede time. This is when they hurry. No huddle, five cold plays, get them roused up, see if you can get momentum back. Out of the shotgun, six defensive backs now for Auburn. Little swing pass out to Hambrick. Got away from Houston, but only to the 31 yard line and uh, negli negligible yardage, if any, there. Herman Banks coming over to make the tackle. Uh, they really want to move the ball as quickly as possible today and retain possession. John Eason, the offensive coordinator, uh, says that Anthony Wright feels that they can maybe get some momentum in this team by going to the stampede. Five called plays that are pre scripted run without benefit of huddle. Well, you try to disrupt the other team on their substitutions. Right. Flushed from the pocket. This is his specialty. Right across the middle. First down. Gamecocks at the 42. Hambrick a little delayed drag pattern. And again, every time Wright is flushed from the pocket, that's when you know you're in trouble. I think Craig may be hurt. I saw him get up. Yes, he may be hurt. Look at him trying to run back. He knows they're in stampede. They've got two more plays, but I think he got hurt on that play when he went down after the pass. Anthony Wright. Yeah. Are coming up a little gimpy there. You're right. Yeah, I think that's Anthony Wright. Excuse me. That's exactly. I just really was shocked to see him get up so slow. We'll swing pattern out again to Hambrick. Now that's what they want from him. Lower your head and surge forward. He's up to the 44-yard line. Herman Banks again, number 20. Making the stop, a true freshman out of Hartsell, Alabama. And look at Wright. He doesn't want to come out of the football game. He wants to stay in. You know that's an easily easy slip to think he looks a lot like Damian Craig because they have a lot of similarities. They really do. In fact, I think it's a real advantage for South Carolina defensively to practice every day against an Anthony Wright in preparation for a Damian Craig. Boo Williams is in the game. That pass for Hood is incomplete on second and eight so it'll be a third and long situation coming up for the Gamecocks and Scott Moritz will check into the game and behind Anthony Wright they virtually have total inexperience they've got Victor Penn who's a freshman he's only thrown three passes he hasn't even thrown a completion yet so they're their man that they have got to go with is Anthony Wright and we talked about the weight on his shoulders losing Zola Davis he knows it more than anybody that's a real sign of courage when you stick out there and just keep on playing Jamel Kelly flanked to the top of your screen, along with Hood. Wright's pass is caught. The draft pattern again. Boo Williams first down at the 43 of Auburn. Boy, listen to these fans. They are up on every play. I mean, they are jumping up. Shotgun. He catches Boo Williams coming across the middle. Number four, just come out of the backfield. Bang, drop it right to him. And Boo Williams is that slash type of runner. He makes people miss. They've seen shades of greatness at him in practice. They just want him to show it in the games. 13-yard pickup. First and 10 at the 44, they mark it, of Auburn. And a check off at the line by Anthony Wright. And Anthony Wright starting to walk around a little bit better. A little bit more bounce in his steps. Run the option. Well, if, you're, if you're checking off into an option play into the boundary, <laughs> I guess you know your legs are underneath you again. Well, he's such a competitor. Such a fire. This is down the line. Now you have to read the backer. Do you toss or do you turn it up? He knows he's got two or three sure yards. He turns it up. Good stick in there by Ricky Neal, the inside backer. Only picked up a yard. Boy, you know, Neil doesn't get a lot of credit, but I'm telling you one thing. He is he has every bit as good. And what a compliment to Takeo Spikes in the middle. Out of Daytona, Florida. Right. Sets up. 
sets up the screen for Hambrick. Out of bounds at the 28-yard line of the Tigers. What a throw. I want to tell you, this is a great throw. Auburn doesn't fall for the screen. They run with it, and look at this. He's just going to just dump it right in, just perfect. Catches Hambrick. Hambrick doesn't need any blocks. Get out of his way. They are doing a much better job in this series of bringing their running backs into the pass patterns, and Terry Bowden knows it. A very pensive look as the Gamecocks just hit with a 36-yard strike from Craig DeBailey are now coming right back at Auburn. Right as 8 of 13 for 82 yards. Straight drop. In trouble. And out of trouble. Inside the 25 to the 24. And again, uh, you wonder each time he hits the deck, how slowly will Anthony get up? Hey, I'll tell you this. He doesn't even feel that knee anymore. This is good bounce back. He sees the pocket collapse. He knows he's, know he's got pressure, so he's got to step up, make positive plays, pick up two or three yards on the play. But let me tell you something. When you're in a game like this and you're playing the number eight or nine team in the nation, the juices are flowing. I can tell you right now, he's excited. Brumball wrapped him up at the 25. He picked up three. Could have lost as much as seven. It's a reverse. Hood to the 21-yard line. Now, this is an area in the game. And don't be surprised if we see this. That Brad Scott, we, we mentioned he did coach for Bobby Bowden. There's a very good chance that in this game you could see a throwback from Hood, a former quarterback, to Anthony Wright. If Wright were completely healthy, you'd probably see it. Well, that was an interesting play, that reverse. They started Hood in motion on the play. And you see him, he just catches him as Hood's coming across in motion. What happens is Wright looks out there, takes a snap, and bang, just hands it to him on the way around. Third down and two. This is Moritz. And again, on short yardage, nothing doing. Takeo spikes the linebacker, makes the tackle, and decision time for South Carolina. They know they have a kicker that can get it done. But they just absorbed a touchdown and momentum clearly with Auburn. Well, and they are the underdog. I think you go for it in this situation. You just can't keep on trading with Auburn. They're too powerful a team. You just, you know, I, I just feel, get the feeling that if you want momentum, and Brad Scott knows how important this game is. Auburn needs a timeout. They were not prepared for a fourth down go for it. So the 12th play of the drive will come after this timeout. 9.23 remaining. Thinking about your financial future? What better company to place your trust? Top 10 in U.S. life insurance and growing fast. A major provider of annuities, investments, and retirement planning solutions. Newton filled the capacity again. It's been about a month since they've had a home game. In the minds of Brad Scott and his staff, he felt that let's get here on home turf against a team we had a good experience against last year, and things can go our way. But they need success on downs like this. They certainly do. I look for them, and if it was me making the call, I'd try to use that rollout, stronger weak side, so that you have that run-pass option. I wouldn't try to run it against Auburn up the middle. I'd try to use that roll and give Anthony Wright. He's your most talented athlete out there. Option to run or pass, perhaps. Four wide receiver set on fourth and two. Twelfth play of the drive. In trouble and sack. Back at the 33-yard line, Ricky Neal. And that really takes a lot of air out of the South Carolina balloon. Well, one of the things they wanted him to do is make quicker decisions. You see 50 blitzing right up the middle. That's Ricky Neal. And they come right on him, and he doesn't throw the football. You don't want to take a sack there. The worst thing you do is throw it up because you take about a 7, 8, 10-yard loss. And that's what it was, a 10-yard loss. So in addition to getting nothing out of a good drive, Auburn does claim the ball at their own 30-yard line. Terry Bowden's team leading it 7-3. 9.15 remaining here in the second quarter. Fred. Over the middle and caught. Goodson again. And when the 
you see those crossing patterns 12 to 15 yards in depth it's generally going to be number 83 and our Arturo Freeman made the stop just a post just come across the middle plant now come right across the middle you see Freeman coming in number 12 I thought he maybe could have gotten in front top that ball away but he kind of played safe a little bit on it I think South Carolina defensively now may be asking itself questions in its secondary because they gave up so many big plays against Mississippi State last week. If they get on their heels, Damian Craig could have a field day. Well, you've got the challenge if you're on defense. You've got to take those chances. Williams in motion. Inside handoff and nothing doing. Michael Maddox makes the stop of Beasley. Rock'em, sock'em football right up the middle. Preston Vinson, number 34, junior transfer from Goose Creek, South Carolina. In on that pop. And I know Brad Scott and his staff were really disappointed last week, but they said they had a great week of practice. They were really kind of almost exuberant about the, the practice that they had. They said, we know that our team is going to play well. And they have. Clifton Robinson is in the game, flanked to the top of your screen. Williams, the lone setback. Craig with time, finds Bailey. Look out. You miss him. He could be gone in a hurry. Stopped at the 34-yard line by Homer Torrance. They'll mark it at the 33. And, uh... Arturo Freeman had a shot and came up with nothing but air. Well, on this play, you're going to see how quickly Bailey gets turned around here. The ball gets to him so quickly, and that's what Damian Craig does. He throws it just a dart right to him, and it gives the wide receiver a chance to turn around and look upfield. You see that ball just on a rope. The corner's coming up, but he's about four to five yards deep, and you see the result. You, as you said, Carson can make a lot of people miss. He's a finalist for the Bolitnikoff Award, a new award for the best receiver in college football. Craig steps up, looking on the post again. Incomplete. Intended for Eric Lowe, number eight. Kevin Brooks was there in coverage. Same kind of pattern as before, and I saw a late flag come down. And there is one way across the field, a late flag. Good pressure there by South Carolina. Lee Wiggins, the outside corner, blitzes on the play. But there's a flag on the play. It's the wave off. Uh, the boo's coming from the Auburn contingent, which is pretty strong here this afternoon. Well, you see the blitz from the strong side, but what a play there by Brooks. Get that hand in, but don't put it on top of him. Get it into the play. But Brooks had gotten burned by that one earlier by Bailey for the touchdown and didn't want to see that an instant replay of that. Second and ten coming up. Goodson and Robinson come split wide to the top of your screen. Bailey to the bottom. Looking for Hicks poor. Incomplete. Poor, the senior from Marietta, Georgia. Had a touchdown catch against LSU. Boy, watch Corey Atkins, number 58, coming in there. Watch this. Damian Craig sees me, holds the last minute. Boom! But Poor very rarely misses a ball that touches his hands. He's got great concentration, good speed. But I think Craig just had to throw that ball too quickly for him. Yeah, but it was still a pretty good pass. Yes, wasn't it? it was right there. <laughs> the only way you can deliver it with plenty of air under it. Fans know this is a big down for the Gamecocks defense. A stunt by the South Carolina defense. Craig doesn't see it with a marker down. There's one out and it's incomplete. Flag down way back at the 47-48 yard line where you would indicate the possibility of holding, but let's see. Well, if it is a hold, it'll be a penalty from about the 44 yard line. We may be able to see this hold. I wondered if it was Victor Riley because the ball came out that way. Victor Riley, of course, is the big right tackle. They were running a stunt defensively, and it caught Craig and the Auburn offensive line off, yeah, off balance. See, see the hold right there? That's why I think they called the hold right there on Victor Riley. But look at Damian Craig. Nowhere to go, nowhere to square up.
Well, that's tough to give that one up because that's a big play. That would have been about a 20-yard penalty, but you'd much rather have fourth down. Well, particularly when you've got Damian Craig out there, yeah. you don't want to give him an extra down. But the truth of the matter is, you know, I'm not I'm not so sure that on fourth and and ten that uh, Terry Bowden is so confident yeah. in him that he wouldn't give him a shot at. I know that's what I was thinking. I was thinking the same thing. It's kind of that in-between area. See, I, I, I think declining the penalty has made this decision a lot easier on Bowden. See if it backfires, because it would have been third down and probably 30. Got a couple of uh, Bobby Bowden protégés making fourth down decisions today. receiver but maybe shy of the first Whoa, down where is he going to mark it Clifton Robinson at the 23 yard line it will depend on left or right foot mark and forward progress where was it given well I'll tell you one thing it, they, the official was in a great position to make it and you see they don't even measure it and look at Terry Bowden he's saying now where did he catch the football yeah, that's a, where was he dropped that's a true freshman running that route and he did not have the necessary yardage so a rookie mistake by Robinson the lead is still four back after a word from your local SEC station hello from Plank Road Field where the guys are getting a little in leading South Carolina the Gamecocks stop an Auburn drive when after saying no to a, a holding penalty Terry Bowden answered by a fourth down go for it but Clifton Robinson's route run a bit shy of the necessary yardage and you see Anthony Wright minus five yards most of that though off that sack Kerry Hood on the quick hitch stopped at the 20 yard line Antoine Nolan coming over there to make the stop. Antoine's the young man, the sophomore from Sharpsburg, Georgia, number 13 for the Tigers. He's the young man that's uh, got the blonde hair. And in talking with Terry Bowden, he said that Antoine Nolan's taking advantage of no team rules for hair coloring. Now, you can't wear the earrings, obviously, and length of hair is a problem, but hair coloring may be in next year's team rules. Yeah, but, but did you hear Damian Craig? He said, now, he's no uh, Dennis Rod. No, he's no Rod. <laughs> Troy Hambrick gets it up to the 25-yard line. Down to Bob Kessler. Leonardo Carson, a guy for the Auburn Tigers, the defensive end, has been bothered the last couple of weeks with an ankle injury. Now, they, uh, Pete Jenkins, the defensive line coach, said he's had his best week of practice. The ankle is almost back to 100%, which is good news for Auburn because he's one of their best pass rushers. And as Anthony Wright scrambles around, they got to chase him down, and Carson is their best chaser. Third down and nine. At the 25. Nickel package now for Auburn. Anthony Wright's pass for Mixon. And he's going to be at the marker for a first down. What an effort. Well, it appeared that his momentum and forward progress would carry him out of bounds. He did a tight roll back to get to the 36-yard line and a first down. Oh, what a play by Mixon. Watch this. Out to your right. Look where he catches it. No way for first down. But watch this right here. Oops, 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 oops. Got to make that red flag. And he falls for the first down. That was a huge play. They didn't want to give it back to Auburn. What a what a thought by Mixon to keep those feet in bounds and pick up that first down. Right. That was big. Antoine Nolan will think better of uh, wrapping him up next time rather than giving him the simple body block. Again, that track pattern. They've gone to it often today at the Gamecocks. Troy Hambrick and uh, Boo Williams have been used as receivers coming out of the backfield well one of the reasons they do that is they think that the the linebackers of Auburn drop so quickly into the pattern that they'll be five to seven yards off the line of scrimmage and they can throw underneath them because spikes and Neil both read the pass so quickly and react both of the runs outside and they get in their drop so they think they can throw underneath second down and eight boo Williams is back in the game Play fakes to Williams. Wright with room. Anthony Wright up to the 44-yard line. John Eason expressed some concern to us as Takeo Spikes ushers him out that perhaps Anthony thinks a little, maybe too long, before he decides to tuck it. Yeah, he He's such a dangerous runner. 
they'd like him to be more confident in opting to run. Yeah, they want him to look across the line and see Damian Craig and say, do that. John Eason, of course, very, very quiet, reserved, but he, but he loves that young Anthony Wright. He just says, that's my kind of quarterback. I love the enthusiasm. I love his desire and his fire. So he's my kind of guy. Third down and a yard to go with the ball at the 45-yard line. That has been a problem down in distance for the Gamecocks all season long. Country Plus, we'll have a talk with the SEC Commissioner Roy Kramer, get his State of the Union address, as uh, you might think about the SEC. Also, we'll take a look at the SEC's best. Right here, it's a third down decision. Courtney Levitt getting set in case he has to be called on to punt for South Carolina. Uh, he was guarding a friend's dog over the last couple of weeks. Well, two weeks ago, that dog, as he walked out of the apartment, jumped up and bit him on the, the backside. So Courtney <laughs> has been nursing that injury, but doesn't seem to affect his punting too much. No, it hasn't. In fact, uh, uh, Bob, uh, when we broached that subject with Brad Scott, he said, uh, hey, wait a minute. He says, if you'll, if you'll punt that well, we'll take it. As a quick change in lineup here for South Carolina. And it's a quick handoff to Mixon, and he stops shy of the first down. Massive substitution change, but it didn't fool anybody. Martavius Houston comes up to make the stop. Boy, and Houston's a free safety on this place. Plays a strong safety position. Left your screen, you're going to see number 25 just come in and cut the legs out. Bang, right there he comes in, he falls short. Now they've got to punt the football in this situation. You cannot take... A, a chance to make it. I know it's fourth down and a foot. And everybody's yelling, but you've got to punt the ball deep. Well, that, they would be better served on fourth and seven, you'd think, than fourth and one yeah. with the way things have been going for them. Levitt, with a lot of bite in his punts, gets plenty of this one. And it is uh, caught at the 12-yard line by Clifton Robinson, and he's down right there. You, that's the reason you punt. You want... Damian Craig to have to go the distance. Ray Green was down there to make the stop. 43-yard punt. The announcers for today's game, selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports, our broadcast, a copyright presentation, and a use of the broadcast without the express permission of the Southeastern Conference, and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. Well, right now, Tim, if you're, if you're a South Carolina fan, you're hoping for a mistake. But that's something that Damian Craig does not do. If you're an Auburn fan, you're saying it's Damian Craig time. Lead him down the field. Craig in trouble. That was a near mistake right there. He did not want to give up the sack, so he lofted it in what he thought was an area where no one could get it. But a Gamecock was in the area. Boy, all day long, Damian Craig has seen Corey Atkins 58 in his face. There he is again. Boom! Down goes Craig. And he dodges a bullet this time because he threw that ball almost up for grabs. Only a couple of interceptions, as we mentioned, for Craig. And uh, yesterday, in, in talking uh, to South Carolina's people, they felt if we can just rush and funnel Craig inside rather than allowing him outside, we'll have a good day. Quick pitch. Sinke Pennington popped hard. At the 15-yard line. Boy, and time becomes a factor now with three and a half minutes left. You don't want to give them too many opportunities. Auburn just trying to get the outside, get some position, get up field. And Pennington does a nice job here putting his head down. You see how well they run with the football? They protect the football. They don't put it on the ground. This is a big play here for Auburn. Now South Carolina could get really good field position with a stop. The fans realize it. You see they're 0 for 5 on third down tries. They did hit a big one on fourth down that led to the touchdown. Well, listen to the fans. They'll tell you if he makes it. And he may have had oh, some encroachment. I think it looked, it looked like Geno yeah. James, number yeah. 78, moved prematurely. I think you're exactly right, Tim. I think what James did is he was falling back out of his, out of his hole. He's the left tackle. He's number 78. And what he does is he just kind of falls back out of his position trying to get back to that set spot. Right at your screen, you'll see it right there. You see him pop up. Even though the defensive player had started off, he can't do anything to continue to draw him off. Yeah, right. Trying to draw encroachment. What he did was uh, <laughs> move prematurely. Boy, it's a huge down for South Carolina. These fans are going to get in it. Third down, 12. 
three wide receiver set for Auburn. Pennington, the lone setback. Craig, incomplete, intended for Hicks-Poor at the 26-yard line with Kevin Brooks, number five, right there with him. And listen to the crowd. Yeah, look at, they're, they're just yelling for him. One of the things that has always impressed me, Dave, about South Carolina's crowd, this is a, a program that's never sustained a winning program for better than, oh, three years or so. But they pack the Raptors every week despite not having the kind of tradition that other schools in this league have. Holmes to put it away. Good field position coming their way as Brooks has it at the 42. Look out! Down to the 23. We have a marker down back at the 40-yard line. So just as they believe they have all the field position, a marker may bring it back. A block in the back, perhaps. I think there's three flags. Let's watch the play. Just what he does is just gets upfield. There's the block in the back. I believe that's the block in the back. Maurice Henderson. Yeah. Number 33. We have an illegal block in the back by the return team. Be a 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Boy. And look what the penalty is. They were going to have the ball on about the 20 yard line. The penalty will be from about the 37. So it's. Gosh, it's about a 27-yard penalty. Ah, oh, that really hurts South Carolina. The 20-hour practice limitation is the uh, is the excuse given for those kinds of penalties in special teams. But we see more of that every week, yeah. deep into a season, than just about any kind of penalty you could ever see in special teams. Well, it's not getting square up. It's not getting the head across the body. It's just making a mistake. See how this comes back to haunt South Carolina. They still have great field position. But that was a killer penalty. From the 47-yard line, first and 10. Right, flushed, and sacked again. Jimmy Brumbaugh. Well, that is just inexcusable for Anthony Wright. He's got to get rid of that football. His right tackle, Reggie Baker, dropped Brumbaugh on the ground. Brumbaugh actually got up off the ground. He's on the right of your screen. Watch him. He gets down on the ground. Now, Brumbaugh gets up, scrambles inside. Wright has just got to get rid of the football. You don't take a 15-yard loss. Anthony Wright sacked 10 times coming into today's game. He's already been sacked upwards of that number in this game. That pass caught Jermail Kelly at the 34 of Auburn. Well, great players make great plays, and that's the kind of person that Anthony Wright is. He just made a mistake on that sack, but now all of a sudden he looks downfield and he picks out Jermail Kelly, who's filling in for the loss of Zola Davis, and boy, he could not have filled in more with a bigger play than that one right there. Red shirt freshman from Greenville, South Carolina, 27-yard reception. Now you want to use the clock. Minute 40 left, a lot of time. Use it wisely. Quick curl. Fleming. First down, South Carolina. Tim, when an all-out blitz comes at you and it doesn't get you, you see them linebackers, everybody, it's one-on-one -on -one for the corners. And what he does is he just makes a simple little curl inside. He breaks the tackle. And all of a sudden, they're inside the 15-yard line with a minute 18 left. Some of these youngsters now getting an opportunity to make plays in the absence of Zola Davis. Kelly and Fleming, a redshirt freshman and redshirt sophomore. Right. For him, incomplete. Never really had control of it, and then got popped by Herman Banks, and the ball fell in place. Well, I, think, I think that time Anthony Wright was looking at Takeo Spikes coming right down his throat, but that's a ball that Hood should have had. Watch this. You're going to see 55. Woo! Come in there and just level him, but that's a ball that Hood should have had. He's got to get that ball into his body quickly. He kind of held it out there, anticipating a little bit of the hit. 
Got to come up with those big catches in this situation. Troy Hambrick has checked into the game. Malone set back with four wide receivers for Anthony Wright. Calvin Owens in the game at the bottom of your screen. Wright looks for him, and he cradles it at the 12-yard line, a negligible game. And a timeout called by South Carolina with 53 seconds left. Let's go down to Bob Kessling, Bob. Coming out also at halftime, Tim, a big ceremony honoring George Rogers, the Heisman Trophy winner, is going into the National Football Foundation and Hall of Fame this December. That's the greatest honor for a player. And yeah, it really is. You know, the best thing that ever happened to me, you know, I, I did a lot of things at the University of South Carolina, but the main thing I did, I, you know, I raised my kids. And I also, you know, I, I'm able to give something back through the George Rogers Foundation. So I think that's good, too. Every time you step in the stadium, Tom sure brings back the, the memories of her 5,000 yards rushing here. I tell you what, man, that was, that was, that was, that was a good old days. And, and when you got a good offensive line like I had, <laughs> it helps a whole lot. Well, you helped a lot, too. But you, you're very active still with this university, aren't you? I certainly am. I, I help recruit, and also and I'm in student affairs. But the, the, best, the biggest contribution I'm giving to the university is through my foundation, and we help the kids get through college. And also you're helping these kids adjust to being a student athlete and getting ready for life, too, aren't that, you? That's right, man. That's important, too. You know, you go to school and you want to have a good time, but you also want to get that education. You know, you go up to New York and you go up to the hotel and they'll be all the great, the greats in college football, every one of them. I'm, I'm sure it's something you've thought about and just can't wait. I it certainly can't, you know, but I accept that award on, on behalf of my teammates and my coaches back then. My, my, like I said, every time I every, even if we didn't win or not, my teammates would always want to know how many yards you had after the game. Thanks a lot, George. Congratulations. Thank you. George Rogers. As great a career as he had to, as a pro with the Saints and the Skins, uh, it's great to see that he remembers the, the really good times on college Saturday afternoons. Third down seven with the ball at the 12. Right with split backs out of the shotgun. Trying to thread it through a couple of defenders to Kelly incomplete. And it's fourth down and a field goal try forthcoming for the game guys. I don't know if the Keo Spike's gonna run all the way with that ball, but he had a great feed on it. Watch 55 and his drop. Reading the quarterback. Now break on the ball. Look at that. Gets a hand out. Right there. That was going to be a completed pass. But I'll tell you this, I don't know if Spike's going to run all that way. He had about 95 yards to go. Florio hit a 44-yarder, missed a 50-yarder. This will be a 30-yard attempt. And, uh, and given the field position they've had this entire half, this is an absolute must for South Carolina. And he got it. And the, the way this game has gone, really all the breaks, all the field position, uh, if you don't come up with any points here, uh, you're really deflated at the intermission. Well, it's got to help Brad Scott going into his locker room. I mean, you look at the losses that he's had, the players he's lost, the big Zola Davis loss today. But he's going in on a positive note with only 43 seconds left here. He's going to go in and say, hey, we can play with anybody. And Terry Bowden's really got to be befuddled over why his offense has not been able to take control of this South oh. Carolina defense depleted with injury at linebacker and with a secondary that has been burned as badly as any in this league in the first two conference games they played against Georgia and Mississippi State. Well, it's kind of, for, for Brad Scott, it's a little bit like that, that injured dog or that, that cornered animal, and I think that's what his team feels like. It's all of a sudden, man, we're going to fight, and they have fought in this first half. And I don't know, you know, everybody always says right away, do, are they looking past? Are they looking up to the Florida game two weeks from now? You're talking about Auburn. No, Auburn, exactly. Yeah. And I don't think that's true. I don't think that a, a coach, the quality of Terry Bowden, would allow them to look forward. But I can tell you right now, he's very concerned because his offense is not playing like they did against LSU. Florio will kick it away. And uh, Clifton Robinson will drop back deep. Now, look. <laughs> We, we're saying 7-6 at the yeah. half. That's not a given. I mean, with plenty of time and Damian Craig at the helm, you can bet uh, Auburn will not be conservative in this next series. No, they're going to throw it up. I promise you that. They squib it, trying to get it to an up back, and it does come to number 38, Roman Nelson. And he's driven down to the ground, shot of the 30-yard line. So oh, the Tigers get decent field position to open this series with 36 seconds left. 
Well, the one thing that might hurt Auburn is they had to use those two timeouts early, so they only have one timeout with 36 seconds left. To get in field goal range, they've got to they've got to cover a lot of ground. But Damian Craig is certainly the one when he gets outside. You've seen him on that roll to the outside to the left, and I mean he has thrown some rockets. Both teams have a timeout. You can bet Auburn will attempt to use it. Four wide receiver set. Craig dumps it. And a big cushion for Robinson. Beyond the 35 to the 36 yard line. Now if you're South Carolina, you just want to catch it in, let him catch it in bounds, bring him down, make him use that timeout. They do with 21 seconds left. Uh, Terry Bowden mentioned to us that if you're asking for a thumbnail on, on Damian Craig, what's the difference? What's made him so uh, mature this year? He says, poise under pressure. Uh, this is a young man that uh, always had the talent, didn't necessarily always respond with poise under pressure. And, and Bowden now fully believes that even when things aren't going their way, as they did against Ole Miss in a yeah, game that you and exactly. Bob Kessling had uh, prior to that LSU game, they would manage to get it done somehow. Yeah, he's a, he's a great leader. And Terry Bowden says, I like his fire in the in the in the huddle. He's in there, he takes charge in the huddle. He's kind of a quiet guy to talk to, but when he gets in the huddle, he's got some fire. And he doesn't demand anything out of his players more than he demands out of himself. That last drive in Baton Rouge, he got in front of his teammates and said, Look, settle down, we're gonna score. And they did. Be sure to visit the official internet side of the Southeastern Conference for up-to-date stats, game previews, coaches' comments, and a lot more. The SEC online at secsports.com. Well, two things for South Carolina in this situation. Get pressure on Damian Craig. Don't worry about the run. And don't get beat deep. Second and two. Craig on that crossing pattern. And Ben Washington just dropped a sure interception. Oh. How did he drop that? Hit him in a bad place, the hands. He had zeroed in. He's playing. Look at Brad Scott. He's going, how did you miss that? Watch him. The ball is overthrown. Look at he's right there, right in his hands. I mean, he's got nothing but sidelines down. And, boy, the one thing you don't want to do is go over to the coach. Look at him looking over there. Uh, coach, uh, it was a little bit high. <laughs> <laughs> Young man from Lincoln High in Tallahassee. And Brad Scott, when he took the job, got one of those from uh, Bobby Bowden's neck of the woods, and that's an outstanding, strong safety. Really a catalyst for the foundation of the South Carolina program under Scott. Now the running play, and Beasley sets free all the way to the 40-yard line with the clock showing seven seconds as they remark the chains after the first down. Now he's got to do a spike on this to get the clock stopped quickly. The clock does not start until they move the chains. The official will give it a start. Then he needs to come in. See, the clock doesn't start. They're holding it until they get the chain set up. Once they get the chain set up, just spike the ball down. Bang. And now two seconds off the clock, so five ticks remain. And a, a decision for Bowden. Well, on fourth down, you'd figure they'd give one good look, but then the possibility of a, a long field goal try, but that would be very, very long if, if it were to come. Don't forget next Saturday, these same South Carolina Gamecocks. If you think they're having to deal with uh, pressure defensively this week, how about when Tim Couch comes to town, the Wildcats and the Gamecocks in Kentucky? A really an interesting game coming up tonight against Alabama. Absolutely. Well, they decided they're not going to go for the field goal. They're going for the home run. Trip set. Goodson up to the top of the screen. And a sack coming. Both defensive lines have been effective today. This one recorded by Cecil Caldwell. We are at halftime. The Gamecocks believe, and their fans do, as their underdog South Carolina team trails by just one. Seven to six. The eighth-ranked Tigers, 4-0 coming in. And let's go down to Bob Kessler. Terry, talk about the first half. Well, you know, it's a tough ball game. We're not in real good sync, but the good credit's got to be to South Carolina. They're playing well. Uh, we're winning by one. one. we got to come out and play a great second half. We've been in a lot of tight ball games, but we've got to play a better football game. Your defense, though, has won the battle of third and fourth downs, those conversions. Well, theirs, theirs has done it to us, too. It's the two defenses really have been the show today. Terry, thanks. Thank you. Terry Bowden taking his team to the locker room, leading here against South Carolina 7-6. We'll have halftime activities from Columbia in a moment. 
Today's Bell South SEC. It's been our best, uh, you know, thing we've done that first half, and, and just not give up that big play right there. We're in this thing. Brad, thanks. A confident Brad Scott talking with Bob Kessling just a couple of moments ago and I think it really does all rest on the shoulders of that man Anthony oh. Wright and and to play with the kind of confidence that's necessary and I detect at times that he's tentative in making some of those decisions as you mentioned he must make right decisions well that's what John Easton told us he said he wanted Anthony Wright to get rid of the football quicker when he drops back don't wait for the receiver to get completely open anticipate him him getting open and that time he took that sack, I know John Eason went over and said, don't do that again. And Brad Scott has, uh, this week, spent a lot of time in becoming more involved in, the, in all of the decision-making with regard to how we're going to attack this Auburn team. Uh, I think he came in as head coach with a more administrative delegation of authority to assistance, having been one himself. But I detect that he's really taken more control of his program this week in the play-by-play -play decisions during the course of a game. Well, such a huge game. If they win this football game, it propels them into the second half. They were really disappointed last year when they got those six victories and did not get a bowl game. Jared Holmes kicks it away, and Boo Williams backtracks deep into his end zone, and it'll be a touchback. Gamecocks will take over. You'll recall they won the toss and deferred so that they would have the opportunity of getting the ball early in the second half. And you see their possession situation. And again, look at all of that field position. And uh, they really got very little out of it. Well, you see, there's only one time that they were three plays and out. So they drove the football. They had a little bit of success. They got some points. And that's why they're in this football game. They got great field position, as you mentioned. But, of course, they were able to drive the football and keep it out of the hands of Damian Craig and company. Ben Fleming and uh, Gary Hood, Calvin Owens, and Jermail Kelly are the four wide receivers. Zola Davis, as we mentioned, uh, out, suspended, involved in an altercation on Thursday night in a campus incident. Uh, the investigation process is prolonged into next week. They're hopeful they'll have him back. He's certainly needed, but today they'll have to get it done with a younger group of legs at wide receiver. That's Hambrick twisting and turning to about the 22-yard line. Dorsey wraps him up, the first to get there, number 91, the junior from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And I like the way Hambrick runs. I mean, once he gets hit, he's always straining for that extra yard or two. He's, he's not just a run-to-the-hole pocket type of runner. He runs when he gets hit, he twists, he turns. We saw him run in that first play in that first series, and he ran hard. Pass distribution in this game, I think, has been important for South Carolina. We've seen running backs utilized every bit as much as wide receivers so they have tried to spread the wealth in this offense today nothing doing for Hambrick a couple of yards and that's all Leonardo Carson sophomore from Mobile Alabama Boy, did he run into a wall in the middle there that might have been Charles Dorsey in there, but I mean, he ran into, he ran into a wall inside. Leonardo Carson is an yeah. amazing story. This is a number 95 for Auburn. He was a quarterback in high school in Mobile and, and grew a little bit. Grew a little. <laughs> He's 6'3", 275 now. When did he do all this growing? <laughs> Third down and six. Up to the 36-yard line, Herman Banks makes the tackle. It's a first down for the Gamecocks. All right, they had triples to the left, trips receivers, and there's a breakdown on the zone right here. You see Hood 9 going out, the two guys going with the other receiver. That's a mistake. That's flooding a zone, and the defense makes a mistake on the coverage. But you see how quickly they get back to react. Bill Oliver next to that post to the right of your screen. Legendary in Alabama oh, for the boy. job he did with that 92 Alabama team under Gene Stallings that won the national title in the Sugar Bowl. And a near pick again. Rob Pate, number 31, the true freshman from Birmingham, Alabama, had an opportunity to pick. That's four dropped potential interceptions today for the Auburn defense. Yeah, he's going to go. He's going to the player. Owens on the play. You can see it underneath. But I was looking to the left of that play, and I want to tell you something. Jamail Kelly was wide open. See if they don't signal down and say, hey, listen, Kelly was wide open. Go to him. 
The okay. one difference between Wright and Craig is that there are times when he tends to focus in on one receiver. Craig will look off two or three times in most situations. Now he tucks it and is taken out of bounds at the 38-yard line. Yeah, Herman right. Banks again is over there. But see, that's a good decision by Wright. That's one of those Wright choices that we talked about. He got they got back in the pocket. The pocket collapsed around him a little bit. Got a little bit of outside pressure. Steps up, picks up positive yards. Doesn't take a four or five yard sack and bring up third down and 15. Third down. Third and eight. At the 38. And again, the sacks due in large part to the minus six yards rushing for Anthony. Trouble again. Gets away from Brumbaugh and now has room. Over the middle and caught. Incomplete. It's dropped just as Hambrick was trying to bring it down. For a moment it appeared he had possession, but then as he hit the turf, it fell free. Pass just a bit overthrown. Well, Hambrick did exactly what he's supposed to do on the play. He came out to the rolled out to the strong side with the quarterback, and all of a sudden saw his quarterback getting in trouble. And you see the emotion right there because Anthony Wright knows that he had Hambrick wide open. And when he throws the ball, Hambrick just got into an open zone. He just needs to just dump the ball to him. Just take something a little bit off it. Don't throw it high. On fourth and eight, Levitt to punt it away. Clifton Robinson awaits at the 20-yard line and immediately calls for a fair catch. Boy, he's been awfully quick with those fair catches. It, it appeared to me as if he had plenty of room, but it does give South Carolina's defense quality field position as they begin their first defensive series of the second half. Third right here. Watch Robinson in the backfield here. He's going to when they kick the football. Now watch when he signals for fair catch. You can see how far the coverage is off. Right there. Now look, they're 25 yards off him, and he's already signaling for a fair catch. He could have at least picked up 10, 15 yards. Again, he catches the ball, and there's nobody within 10 yards of him right there. And there was a huge picket fence along the left side that he could have taken advantage of uh, he's a true freshman and I'm sure he'll learn in time a special team so important with regard to field position and you give Damian Craig an extra 20 yards to work with and he can really be difficult to stop as it is now the South Carolina forces can be a little louder in that end zone Craig for Robinson and he's dragged down 17-yard line. Pretty good work by Lee Wiggins, who's being asked to do a lot in today's game. At times, he's coming up and playing that outside linebacker spot because of the injuries to Hambrick and the inexperience of Marco Hutchinson. And then at other times, he becomes a nickelback. And look at that. He's uh, inching in on Jeff Berger uh, to become number five. He's only three yards away from breaking that. Slack and Knicks. Uh, a little down the road, and perhaps uh, he can break their records. Craig dumps it over the middle to Rusty Williams. And the South Carolina native, sophomore from Monk's Corner, forges ahead for a first down, and Craig now becomes number five on that all-time list. You know, he also has an opportunity with a 300-yard-plus passing day today. He would pass or tie Pat Sullivan, you see him moving up to number five. Uh, but he would tie Pat Sullivan's record of five consecutive games with over 300 yards in the air should he have that much today. And uh, many times that's the case, particularly with virtually no running game. Quick out to Goodson. Up to about the 33-yard line. Boy, this is where it's Damian Craig time. A little roll out to the outside, get him outside the pocket, get him out of that pressure. He looks down, makes those quick decisions. And I think if, if Anthony Wright was to look at Damian Craig and say, there's one thing that I want, it would be the decisions that Damian Craig makes. Tremendous control of the game. Doesn't try to force the ball in, doesn't try to play above himself. And Anthony Wright is learning the game of football. Damian Craig has already learned it. And, uh, and, and I think your body language tells a lot. Damian Craig... Uh, he seems to be in control, as, and I think sometimes the intensity of Anthony Wright takes over. Here's Rusty Williams. Ushered out right at the 40-yard line. Another first down. Arturo Freeman over to make the tackle. Well, Tim, there's no more important drive than the first drive in the second half. This is good read right here. 
Rusty Williams does is get outside. He sees the corner is locked up on him. He's got he's got some room to get outside, get that first down, keep those chains moving, safe play. And as I said, this first this first drive really sets the tempo. A little intensity there from uh, oh boy. Terry Bowden. Amen. <laughs> he is in it every play. First and ten. Time again the drag pattern. It's to Bailey, and he is spun down at midfield. Should be another first down in the arms of Arturo Freeman. And it's interesting to see the adjustment that they have made for Auburn. What they've done is they're throwing underneath the coverage. You got nickel backs right here, dropping quick into the zone, and you see them, they're throwing underneath. See, run them deep, come underneath, and try to break that big one. Then the defense has got to react up. There, that did that nickel defense with that drop will give you that underneath throw. And Bailey has uh, made a living out of it today. Send Kate Pennington checks in. You see Bailey, 5 of 86, better than 17 yards per catch. On first down, swing pattern to Pennington, and it is read beautifully. Corey Atkins has been everywhere. That's his fifth tackle of the day. He's also been involved in a sack. Well, he's Sack and a half, and he also has five solo tackles. So it's been a very event-filled afternoon for number 58, the redshirt sophomore from Southside High in Greenville, South Carolina. Well, when you lose your leader in the middle, as they lost Shane Burnham, you need players to step up. Mark Love has stepped up. Burnham's come in and played a little bit. But Corey Atkins has been all over the field today. Mark Keith Cooper, a.k.a. the Lizard, number 17, has come in. You see Burnham there on the sidelines watching his teammates try to stop this Auburn drive. Lofted for four. Nice catch. Inside the 30-yard line for a first down. Ray Green, number three, late to recover. Over there to make the stop. Had to be a breaking coverage, and it had to be Ray Green because he's just wide open. You'll see this ball is thrown high. Look, nobody around. You see Green. He has to come all the way from his strong safety position over to make the play. So it had to be a breaking coverage somewhere. 27-yard pass connection. Terry Bowden's team looking very fluid, making it look easy. Yeah. And that adjustment, I think, that you mentioned, uh, due in large part to the confidence that they have in this draft. Complete. That was a tough one to complete. Good coverage from Freeman, intended for Hicks Poor, number 89. Boy, you can see you can see the blitz in the middle is going to try to get pressure on Damian Craig. Interesting. Both wide receivers get forced into the middle, and look how close they are. Right there, you see they're running right together. One of them gets forced inside, and the other one gets forced to the into the slot. So they're running right side by side. You don't want that. 15 of 25, 184 yards and a touchdown for Craig. Second and 10 at the 29 of South Carolina. Craig's pass to Williams. It's wide open for him. Inside the 10, down at the 8. And they are isolating Williams on the linebackers, and that is a real problem for Brad Scott. Yeah, what they did is you'll see number eight come into your picture. They're isolating. There's number three, I should say, excuse me. And what they're doing is they're trying to isolate him on Rusty Williams. Rusty Williams coming across, and they're trying to isolate him, excuse me, on Corey Atkins. Again, Atkins is not going to stay with him. See Rusty Williams come across there. Atkins is tra chasing him. He's got that coverage. They're throwing underneath again. So at the eight yard line, first and goal for Auburn. Option to run a pass for Craig. He'll run, no, he'll pass. Incomplete. <laughs> to the last second. He knew where the line of scrimmage was and thought for a long time about taking it in, and there was room for a brief moment. Well, he's almost unbelievable. He comes out here. He's going to come strong side, and watch the backer come up and get in his face. The backer is just Corey Atkins is going to be right there, right? He just keeps a dodge. He doesn't look downfield. Again, now I've got the run pass option. I kind of pull up, square up a little bit, try to dink it over their heads. But what a threat 
Damian Craig is when he has that football and he gets outside containment. In the red zone, they have been efficient, to say the least. And they've not turned it over all year. Craig for Gibson, touchdown. I don't know that Damian Craig threw a pass that measured in length of yardage more than 10 yards in this no. entire drive. All little dumps across the middle, playing underneath the zone. This is exactly what he does on this. He slides out to the flat. You'll see Goodson go out to the flat, look that football in. He's one-on-one. -on -one. He just beats the coverage into the end zone for a touchdown. That's prime Damian Craig. Drive his team the length of the field. Jared Holmes boots it through. And uh, what's even more upsetting, I'm sure, to South Carolina is not just the touchdown, but the ease with which Auburn cruised down the field. This isn't just a car. Perhaps uh, the biggest drive of his uh, young career and uh, of the South Carolina season coming up. The challenge has now been issued by his counterpart, Damian Craig, in that last drive. Absolutely. Nothing will get that momentum back in South Carolina's position unless Anthony Wright's able to drive him down the field. If they just go three and out, give the football back to Auburn, it could be a long day for South Carolina. But they still have that enthusiasm. Bill Williams back deep. Jared Holmes to kick it away. The senior from Clinton, Mississippi, boots it again very deep. He has been outstanding today with those kickoffs. Very few have been returned. And the Gamecocks will have to start again at their own 20-yard line. Bobby, Bobby Bowden would be proud of both son Terry and his counterpart today, Brad Scott. Uh, they, they were tutored under him. They have different approaches to the game, but a very similar approach in how to run a program. Yep. They don't take they don't even do any they don't do anything wrong. Let me tell you, they do make all the right decisions. Jacob Bush is in the game at fullback and Hamburg at tailback as the Gamecocks open this drive. Play fake. Right. Over the middle and dropped. And Jermail Kelly. Right this is your opportunity, a red shirt freshman and uh, an outstanding athlete. You cannot have drops against a team of this caliber. Well, what he does is he tries to catch it against his body. You've got to reach out and catch the ball with your hands. He tries to trap it against his body and watch what happens. I'm going to hit him right in the hip. Point pops right back out. Look how wide open he was. Uh, you know, I think this has an impact, too, on Wright. Uh, he, he loses confidence in some oh, of his yeah. receivers and now becomes more tentative in the choice that he makes with the four wide and three wide receiver set. And he doesn't have one of his go-to people in Zola Davis here. Second down, set up the screen, and that was read perfectly by Martavius Houston. Troy Hambrick was the receiver, but uh, that one was telegraphed in every way, and Bill Oliver's defense up with the challenge for Auburn. That's what you call answering it. Houston certainly answers it. But you've got to go downfield against Auburn. You've got to challenge him. You've got to do that one-on-one -on -one situation. You've got to use some of that height. Look at that uh, distribution yeah. of passes. The running backs have been more involved today. And in general, those drag patterns have been going to them. But now they, they have to look deep and look to wide receivers. Third down and 15. Oh, right pass. Oh, oh what a Kelly. Guy. Incomplete. He got a hand on it. Wow. The quality coverage by Larry Casher, the true freshman, and three and out is not what South Carolina wanted to see here. No, I thought he almost came down with his football. What's the problem when he went into the line? But watch this stretch. Look at this. Stretched out. He's got the hands on it. Oh. And you see it come out under the ground. But boy, that was a good effort. He's trying to atone for the drop that would have kept that drive alive. Courtney Levitt will punt it away. And again, Auburn gets tremendous field position for this next drive with Clifton Robinson back deep. Had a chance for a block. Robinson this time. I think somebody talked to him about that early fair catch. I mean, South Carolinians <laughs> were all around him. Yeah. And he decided to go ahead and try to return. To our stations down the line on our Bell South SEC Game of the Week, due to some satellite problems that we're having, we 
will be changing satellites during the upcoming local break at approximately 2.59 Eastern Time, 1.59 Central Time. So bear with us. It's that time of the year. Uh, sunspots can become a factor, and uh, we'll be changing satellites along about the time of 2.59, 1.59 Central Time. This would put a heartache in South Carolina if Damian Craig, if South Carolina cannot answer on defense, if Damian Craig drives his team down again like he did last drive. Craig again dropped by Williams, and it was right there for him. Perhaps he heard the footsteps of Lee Wiggins, number 27. So a rare drop by Auburn. You know what amazes me? Why a wide receiver will come out, drop one. He'll make. Now Williams just made that great catch across the middle just juking everybody down the sideline and then he's got one wide open and he drops it just doesn't look it in. Sin Kate Pennington comes in for it. I think they're telling him you got to look that ball in. <laughs> they want his attention. Craig finds his man. Karsten Bailey at the 46 yard line. And that's a first down. When Damian Craig starts throwing those ropes, those straight balls, you're in trouble if you don't get pressure on him. You see the loop in the middle, they don't get pressure on him. Look at that ball, just bang. Right to his wide receiver, right in the pocket, the cradle where he has his hands. And look at that, confidence, just a rope, bang, right to him. That's Damian Craig. That's the Damian Craig that we're used to seeing, and that's the one that puts so much pressure on defenses. You mentioned in Rose Rewind that the defense needed to cause a turnover. I, this is the time they need one. Well, they sure do. Craig again. Right to Williams. That's a drop. That ought to be a fumble. That should be a fumble, and South Carolina has it. Well, buddy, I'm not going to doubt you anymore. You just said the words out of my mouth. South Carolina needed a turnover, and they're going to get it. As Rusty Williams just comes down with the football, you see he ran with the ball. I don't know that he had control of it. I wondered if he had possession. Uh, I thought he did. Yeah, well, I thought he was tucking it away, and I, I called it a drop, and I felt it was a drop all the way. I would agree with the call. Well, we got to disagree on something. <laughs> Swings it out. These little flares and screens are not going to work against this Auburn defense. Listen to this crowd. They don't like the selection of receivers either. No. Don't go to the flat. Go downfield. Let's take a look at this play. Let's play again. That's Rusty Williams coming across. Does he have possession of it? I don't know about that. Uh, you know, I think, I think the official may have felt as I did. He was simply putting the ball in a position to carry it that he did have control. But upon further review, you may have a point. Terry Hood gets hammered. Neal is just right in his face. Would you hear that hit? And Neal doesn't get a lot of credit, but he, he last year he had 111 tackles back there at that backer spot. And I mean, he gets those drops and comes up and just... Wham! He's yeah. got somebody he's competing with, and that spikes. I'm also hearing a lot of boos and a lot of rumbling here from the faithful in Columbia. Well, they know how, how big this, this series is. You've got to pick up the first down. You've just gotten an opportunity. Don't squander it. Right in trouble again. Down he goes. Ball is loose. Auburn's got it. Takeo Spikes is on top. And this is a frustrated, flustered South Carolina team. No, I, I don't know. He may have been down with the football, but I don't see. I don't see him getting up. I don't see Anthony Wright popping up. Uh, there Spikes he is. was on top of it. Well, but I wondered if he was down underground and uh, had his hand be, on the ball. They may be ruling it down then. But uh, Dorsey sacked him. Yeah. And listen to the crowd respond well, to this well, offensive well, series. Well, 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 I mean, uh, the honeymoon is over for this offense. Well, you've got to take opportunities. You've got, you don't get many opportunities against a Terry Bowden Auburn team, and you've got to capitalize on them, and they did not. I think that's a huge break that they didn't have the turnover. 11th run of the way. Fair catch that called for very quickly, and look at this bounce. Another questionable decision by Clifton Robinson. 
calls a fair catch, then allows the ball to drop in front of him, and an extra 20 yards for that punt. Again, to our stations down the line, due to the satellite problems, we'll be changing satellites during the upcoming local break. And you see the transponder right there on your screen. That was a 58-yard punt. And again, Robinson with a poor decision. I think it was a 38-yard punt with a 20-yard roll. <laughs> because he's what, what you need to do in that situation. When the ball's kicked high like that, don't, don't let it hit the ground. Because you saw the roll. You run up, you catch the football. You're not going to get hit. Going back to that last series, Dave, after the drop by Jermail Kelly, we have not seen a pass thrown over the middle better than 15 yards yeah. by South Carolina. And again, you know, you wonder about Anthony Wright's confidence in it, the other players around him. Well, I just think they, South Carolina needs to challenge. This is one, this is even a bigger series than the last one because now they've got them deep in their own territory. Hits four, breaks three, and has a first down. He's up to the 23 yard line. A very resourceful move by Hicks Poor. Senior from Marietta, Georgia. Auburn has given South Carolina room to breathe more than Terry Bowden would like. But at some point, you have to go for the jugular. Well, you got to. You got to go down and challenge. See, they thought they had a couple real good matchups. They felt that they had some height on one of the corners. They thought they could, they could attack that and use that. They haven't gone to it. Fred with time. Goodson's got it. And, and that's, again, Damian Craig, we talk about how tough and, and how savvy and mature he's become. But he's got receivers he's very confident in, like Tyrone Goodson. Well, Goodson looks the football in so well. Look that. They're, they're not getting the pressure that they got on earlier. Look at that. Thrown over top of coverage right to a spot, a perfect spot. See, he reads his wide receiver, steps up in there and delivers, and you can see some late pressure. But again, he knows he's got so much confidence in Goodson. Knows exactly where he's going to be. First and 10 at the 42. Delay. Rusty Williams getting a little something out of nothing there. Up to the 45-yard line. Just managed to negotiate that far. He was leading Auburn in rushing coming in with a paltry 154 yards. They've sustained the ground game through the course of this year. Look at that story in the half. South Carolina's offense in the deep freeze, while Auburn has uh, improved mightily, particularly off that opening drive, which really set the tone in the second half. Well, nothing will demoralize a defense quicker than when you get a turnover and you get nothing out of it, and you gotta go right back out there on defense. And now they're not getting the pressure that they've had in the past from Damian Craig. Eric Lowe was wrapped up by Freeman, continued to lumber along. He has 10 tackles today, does Arturo, number 12. He's been very busy. The junior from Orangeburg, South Carolina. He's been getting a workout covering that intermediate pass. Short. Running down both uh, Karsten Bailey, Tyrone Goodson, and, and others. This is where you're for Damian Craig. You say, should I just pull it out and take it back or just go for the quarterback sneak for first down? Third down and a yard. The ball came free. The ball came free on what appeared to be second effort. Now, I think they may have given him his forward progress and blown the play dead. I'll tell you one thing. That was close. No, I didn't hear a whistle. Doesn't appear as if the officials are going to award the ball to South Carolina. Well, let's watch and see if we can see the football right here. It's right there in the middle. Now, the whistle is not playing, thrown out. There, the ball's out. That's a fumble. Yeah, that's He's a fumble. not down. He's not down. Ball should belong to South Carolina. Now, we didn't hear a whistle. Now, that, well, that we can tell you. We're not down there, so we didn't hear the whistle. But the forward progress did not appear to have been given. No. And you know what? I, let's take another peek at that if we could. Watch, watch the play. Now, the quarterback, you know, you talk about forward progress as we see the first down is made by right, Auburn to keep this drive alive. But, again, watch this. He's stretching in there. You're going to see the ball pulled out. Now, that play's still going on. There's the ball free right now. He's not near down. Uh, the only thing you, you can anticipate from our perspective is that the whistle must have blown, and uh, <laughs> Terry just got a break. If that last call was should have been incomplete, then that certainly should have been a fumble. Oh, I think so. First and 10 at the 48. Craig in 
incomplete. One of those rare moments when he releases one too quickly, intended for Rusty Williams. Ben Washington was in pursuit. Second down and 10 coming up. Well, Damian Craig has gotten what he wanted. He's getting that little dink pass coming out of the backfield. And look at what happens when he misses it. Oh, man, I had him. Look at the competitiveness he has in him. Now, gather your composure, get back in there, be the leader that uh, we, we see so often in the yeah. huddle. And clean your mouthpiece. <laughs> yeah, he threw his mouthpiece <laughs> on the ground. Second and 10. Damian Craig, is he special? I mean, he just got away from Sly Miller as if he had become invisible. He was running a stunt and went right by Craig, and he manages the 39-yard line, only a yard shy of another first down. I don't know how he got out of that pile. He might have gotten a real good block by Curry, number 69. Let's see if we can see it in the middle. That's a twist to the outside. Come up underneath and look at him. He's going to run right there. No, look right there. He's down, right? Nope. Gets those speed up, those quick feet. Oh, was thinking about getting positive yards. Third down in the yard. I don't think he's going to quarterback sneak this No, time. and this is four down territory uh, as far as Terry Bowden's concerned. Williams met at the line. I don't think he made it. Ben Washington, the strong safety, comes up with uh, some dramatic run support. And I believe he stopped him shy, but uh, as I mentioned earlier, it... Short edge, more than likely fourth, fourth down, down territory, but uh, now it appears that Jared Holmes is making his way out. Well, Terry Bowden playing it perhaps a little closer to the vest here. Jared Again, to our stations uh, down the line, our satellite problems necessitate changing of satellites. We'll do that in the upcoming local break, the next break forthcoming. Now, they may be watching for a yeah, fake here. I, I think that's what they're thinking, fake punt. The ball's on the 39-yard line. If you kick it into the end zone, you're only going to gain. Now they take the delay again. No, they call timeout? Yeah, they did. Oh, wow, right. wait a minute. Yeah. That's an odd call. Well, I think they may have been trying to get the five-yard penalty. And uh, perhaps because they didn't get the five-yard penalty, they'll go for it on fourth down. But all of that comes after we change satellites with our stations down the line and after this word from your local SEC stations. Come see the all-new 1998 Intrigue by Oldsmobile, a four-door sports sedan. One second remaining here in the third quarter and a fourth down and a yard to go. And after a timeout, Auburn determining that they will in fact punt the football or at least line up in that position. South Carolina doesn't appear as if they believe it. They're looking for the possibility of a fake. I don't believe it. <laughs> well, believe it. I do now. Fair catch called for. They try to pin South Carolina back. Oh. Don't they, tell me. Yeah, I think they're going to oh. roll it down inside the one-yard line. Who was that that froze on about the one-foot line? It may be T Tyrese Williams, number 22. I think he just froze on the one yard about the foot line. Yeah, and he knocked it back. And uh, while he didn't control it at the one, they will have it at uh, the four-yard line, a 35-yard punt. And Terry Bowden decides to play field position with an eight-point cushion at the end of three. The Auburn Tigers ranked eighth in the country and unbeaten try to continue with their lead in the fourth. We open the fourth quarter, a 14-6 lead, and uh, poor field position for South Carolina and a questionable call here. Well, I wondered whether the ball penetrated the end zone because watch Tyrese Williams. Look at him, 22. His feet right there are on the line. He's got the ball in his hand. He flips it back, but he is standing on the line. Now, whether the ball broke the plane. Another story, but South Carolina needs to manifest some offense. They've had none in the second half, and Bush gets ahead for about a yard, maybe two. One first down, one for South Carolina in what was a horrible third quarter offensively for them. Well, they're, they're extremely lucky. Their defense has really played strong football. They're eight points down right now, only because their defense has played so strong. But you can't expect your defense to keep on, just keep on keeping on when you get one first down. Anthony Wright rolling out. Oh, that was nearly picked. That was nearly 
pick. I, he has made some very questionable decisions in this half. Well, I like him when he rolls out, but I like him when he comes out and squares up and looks downfield and has more than one person in his pattern. He only had one person in his pattern. That was Ben Fleming. And Brad Ware had him covered like a glove. You see when he runs out here, the only person that you're going to see out in the pattern is eight. Look, right there. Bang. And I mean, doesn't Ware have him just covered like a glove? I don't know if I would have done that. Third down and eight at the six. This to those Auburn fans in the end zone. Hood in motion. Play fake. Right. Another near pick. This one by Antoine Nolan. Ravon Matthews, the tight end, the intended receiver. And this is a dazed and confused South Carolina offense. Well, I wonder, because they're getting such great breaks on the ball, as you look at the Auburn fans responding, I'm wondering if, they're, if Anthony Wright is not zeroing in on his primary receivers. Because look at the defensive coverage. They're right there. And anytime you see a defensive back break on the, belt, on the ball as it's being thrown, you know that he's looking at the eyes of the quarterback. And amazingly, this only began after the drop by Jamel Kelly in the third quarter. Yes. Levitt to punt it away. Markeith Cooper back deep and has it at the 48. And he's up to the 45-yard line. And once more, Damian Craig with... Tremendous field position for Auburn as they look to provide a knockout punch. That's a 46-yard boot. And uh, this is South Carolina defense that's done all that it can, but you get the feeling that the longer that man is on the field, the life support system uh, for the South Carolina defense really being put on hold. Don't forget, next Saturday, our SEC Game of the Week back here again, the Gamecocks against the Wildcats. Al Mummy will bring in quarterback Tim Couch. 17 touchdown strikes this year. That's 12.30 Eastern, 11.30 Central Time. Craig lofting it for Bailey. And that one's picked up, and then fumbled. Fumbled and then caught at the one-yard line oh, no. and out of bounds. You're not going to tell me. Wait a minute. The ball didn't go in the end zone. No, it was down at the one-yard line. It's going to well, be like a great punt because he had possession. Oh, no. No, look what they're signaling, Tim. Oh, I, I think th they're signaling sad. That was a that was an interception that appeared to be down. Torrance had it and appeared to be down at the one yard line. Well, that's what I thought. Watch 25 Torrance right here. He's going to turn. He's got a good position. Look at this. Gets the ball now. Watch when he gets possession right there. Now he fumbles right there on about the five. No, about the 10 yard line. And where does the ball go out of bounds? Watch the ball. I thought they downed it on the one yard yeah, line. I did too. Well, it's been, as they say, a game of inches, oh. uh, and each team has gotten a break or two because of that. Well, that's a huge break. Watch this play. When the ball goes out of bounds right here, the team that last has possession gets the football. The question is, oh, there. Oh, I see it. All right, there. That's they it. didn't recover it on it. went out of the end zone. All right, thanks to Kenny Dennis. Oh, man. The director that uh, tells the story from that angle. It clearly made its way into the end zone, and a good call by Esther oh. Sizemore and that crew. And you see the debate from Terry yeah. Bowden. He he didn't have the angle that we just had. Well, see, I think he felt that they came down on the one, and that's where they should have had the football. But he's saying, wait a minute now. He said, if they had possession, they fumbled out of the end zone. I think that's the discussion. Why are you giving them? You're actually giving the team that, that intercepted the ball. You're really giving them a break. For Brad Scott, he loves it. He's saying, I, I, I think his debate, he said, it should be our ball. I think he's trying to determine that Torrance did not have possession of the football. Oh, no, I think he had possession. There was an interception. The ball was fumbled into and out of the end zone by the interception team. Therefore, you have a football. That's right. That's what I thought. That's exactly what I thought. That's exactly what I thought. See, the team, you actually penalize Auburn. Now watch this right here. There's the catch. Now just watch along. Now he's got possession right there. Now he's the he's the receiving team. He fumbles out of the back of the end zone or into the end zone out to the side. Now if they'd recovered it, they would have had the ball on the first down. But they don't recover it. It goes into the end zone. So it's actually and nobody gets it. So it's actually a, a safety, a safety yeah. because nobody recovered it. You can't give it to South Carolina out on the 20 yard line. Well, and give credit to Terry Bowden for yeah. knowing the rules as well as he does. And, of course, uh, a former lawyer, 
uh, keeps up with such well, things and he, and he lobbied and and won and that is a huge call and you see Brad oh, Scott looking for an explanation and uh, the officials are still talking about it it's rare when you see a play like that it, at first glance for us we felt it should have been South Carolina's ball at the one yard yeah. line or the one foot line. that's all I was thinking I was thinking it should have been South Carolina's ball on the one yard line but then the camera showed the picture showed that the ball was fumbled now the last team to have possession was South Carolina so they fumbled out of the back of their end zone it'd be like a quarterback going back and fumbling back into the end zone or out of the back of the end zone hey this this is not over I mean this is <laughs> this uh, they're locked in conclave again oh yeah but see watch right here there's several elements here he has possession now he fumbles right there now if South Carolina recovers it it's their ball right there where they recovered if for example right here Auburn comes in if they recover it it's a touchdown for Auburn because possession had clearly been maintained by South Carolina before they had lost exactly it. right and, uh, and uh, what looked to be a great break for the Gamecocks turns into a very difficult situation for Brad Scott and uh, I think the officials did a marvelous job of getting it right yep. unfortunately the home team not happy about it and uh, credit Terry Bowden for maintaining the conversation and and getting it clear because you know they had to give him an explanation well, exactly on what right. in fact had happened and uh, another coach might have just said well okay <laughs> Damian Craig is saying that was a heck of a play to get two points you'll never get <laughs> you'll never get two points like that I think Damian's there going now how did I get did I get yeah. two points scored that time does that go in my charts but it's a it's a crushing blow oh, for South Carolina. It, it, really it really is, is because now an offense that's been uh, in the deep freeze the entire second half would have to have two scores rather than one and a two point conversion to tie or potentially tie the game. Ab absolutely. And I know there's happy Auburn fans over there. I know the Parkers and the Penningtons drove all the way from Auburn over to see this game. And they're probably part of that crowd of about probably about four or five thousand that are standing up there cheering. Well, what has been a, a, a difficult day for the officials to be sure there have been a number of tough calls timing calls and uh, and controversial calls but in this case Astro Sizemore's group gets it done well I wonder if they'd allowed South Carolina to quickly run out and run a play what would have happened but they were giving it back to Auburn that would have been a tough call we may not always agree with calls that are made during the course of the game but uh, in this case they got it right and, and there's a fumble has been done down by 10 16 6 <laughs> Anthony Wright is at a sluggish second half hands to Boo Williams at about a two maybe three yard pickup and Tim let's remind our fans there's 1330 left and South Carolina's only down eight points oh 10 oh they're down 10 yeah excuse me that's right with the two I forgot the two oh, don't forget the two oh yeah but it's still it's so close right now because that a play like that can swing momentum tremendously and nobody knows it better than those two. Jermail right Kelly, Jermail Kelly and Hood go right to the top of the screen. And Anthony Wright's got to find one of them. He can't keep on digging to his backs. He's got to go deep on a play. Challenge the defense. In trouble. He just cannot feel Brumbaugh today. Uh, Jimmy Brumbaugh has been breaking free, and, and Anthony Wright has been much slower to respond from the rush coming from that side, slower than I've ever seen in the two years that he's been quarterbacking here. Well, just a two-step drop, and you see Brumbaugh come from the bottom and just hook his leg. Sometimes your greatest tackles are made when you're on the ground scrambling, but you got to credit Jimmy Brumbaugh. Look at that. I mean, it has been a blowout for Damian Craig. A quarterback in the second half. Pass over the middle and cut. That's Ben Fleming, number eight, the redshirt sophomore from Jacksonville. 
Anthony Wright needs to allow that kind of success to play to his favor because clearly this is a South Carolina team that feels that it has some matchup advantages. They felt that way in our meetings prior to the court, uh, this game getting underway. And that is the first time I've seen in this second half, I've seen Anthony Wright get some fire in his bonnet and go out there and challenge the defense. Well, Antoine Nolan just left the game. And uh, you got to believe that Larry Casher, who just came in for him at that corner, could be tested. Play fake. Wright from Mixon. And you see the frustration. And John Eason will tell you that you don't let that bother you. It's not that Anthony Wright is mad at the personnel around him. He's just so intense, such a competitor, so fiery that he wears his feelings on his shirt sleeve. Well, he does. He really does. But he gets composure back quick. But that time he just he came out, had a great play fake into the line. And John Eason loves those play fakes because it holds the linebackers. And then you look downfield and find your wideouts. But I just get the feeling that Anthony Wright has got to go down and challenge the defense. You've got to get that one-on-one -on -one situation. Second and ten at the 29. Fake reverse. Wright in trouble. Down he goes. Ball is loose. And the Tigers have it. what he's going to do on this play. He's making the reverse right here. He wants to fake the reverse and come out here all by himself. When he turns around, look who's in his face. He's got two of them right in his face. And one of them's Ricky Neal, number 50. Five sacks absorbed by Anthony Wright today. He had 10 coming in. I mean, he's had half as many sacks given today than he's had all season. Well, that was such a slow developing play, and the reverse usually works if you, if you it catches the, the defense off guard. But when you've got those linebackers like Auburn do, and they're coming just as hard as they are, you've got to get rid of the ball a little bit faster. Greg, for Williams, right past Burnham, first down at the 40, maybe inside it at the 39 of South Carolina. And uh, uh, again, plenty of time remaining in this game. But uh, you get a sense that that last turnover by South Carolina uh, has deflated that sideline as much as any play could possibly have deflated a team. Well, you want something to lift your defense. You just get a huge turnover. You've got to get at least three points off it so the near touchdown is going to win it for you. And they come away with nothing. They had the ball first down on what, about the 40-yard line? 45-yard 45 line. 45-yard line, and they get nothing out of it and give the ball back. Just You can't keep on asking your defense to do that. Eleven thirty remaining in the game. 16-6 Auburn. I'll need another stop against Terry Bowden's offense when we come back. This isn't just Auburn with a, a bizarre last oh, 10 okay. minutes of this game. I don't know that I've seen uh, uh, as many decisions that you might not often see during the course of a year happen in one single game in about a quarter oh, period boy. of time. Well, I don't even know it was a quarter. I thought the, the <laughs> punt that went to the one yard line, the fumble back, the fumble back and forth, the explanation, the Terry Bowden uh, yeah. uh, challenge. And, and, credit, uh, and credit Terry oh, again. Yes, I mean, that's a so. tremendous heads up uh, yeah. by your head coach who who only got that kind of decision from questioning the explanation that had been given him. First and 10 at the 38-yard line for Auburn. Blitz. Wide open. Burned and down at the one-yard line. That's Kevin McLeod. And Craig is holding his left arm, his left wrist. Yeah, look at that arm. Look at him point down to that arm. He took a shot. He's a fearless quarterback there. He can see both safe corners running at him. I mean, they just nailed him. And he may stay in the game. Wait a minute, he's not coming out. He walked all the way over there. And again, look at this. Both corners just going to nail him from the outside. Ready? Bam! And down he comes on his left arm. That's Terrace Sullivan and Lee Wiggins. 13 and 27 to just nail him. And there's the end of result right there. McLeod just comes down with a long run. Boy, he comes with one yard line. Wow. He stayed in. Touchdown. Beasley over the 
top. And now the concern for the health of Damian Craig becomes the centerpiece for all of the Auburn faithful. Well, what happens in a situation like that, a lot of times if you come down in your arm, you might get just a stinger. He looked like maybe he shook it off. Maybe it kind of stung him at first, but he shook it off. Before you go back to South Carolina's opportunities, and they have just missed out on their opportunities. Jared Holmes for the extra point. It is a 23 to 6 lead for the eighth ranked Tigers and it hasn't come easily the turning point in this game besides Auburn's offense which was outstanding to start this second half the death nail may have been this play oh, this was Torrance awesome. with the pick ball is loose clearly possession belonging to South Carolina but then when the ball is lost out of bounds in the end zone it's for a safety. And then after South Carolina doesn't cash in off yet another Auburn turnover, they make them pay, and Beasley puts it away. Damian Craig, I'm sure Bob Kessling will get a report for us with regard to his health or lack thereof. Uh, and that is a great concern with Florida just a couple of weeks away on their schedule. Have you ever seen a turning point result in more different things? First of all, South Carolina was going to have the football. They lost the football. They also gave up two points, plus they gave the football back to Auburn in great field position. That is a killer. But at no time in this game have you gotten a feeling that Anthony Wright had gotten into any rhythm or had developed any confidence with the other potential playmakers that surround him. Boo well, Williams is back deep waiting for him. Well, well, just kick. well, Tim, you make a really good point. I think the loss of Zola Davis, sure, you've got receivers but you've practiced all week long with Zola Davis, and that's one of your key matchups, and all of a sudden you take him out of your offense. It's like taking Hambrick. They never thought about the loss of Hambrick, what that would mean to this team, and then you lose Shane Burnham in the middle, so everything is compounded and down against South Carolina. Holmes just continues to kick the ball into and out of the end zone, and it doesn't matter which direction his toe is headed. South Carolina will have the ball at the 20-yard line, and with 10:52 left, it's not over. But uh, the yardage, the, st the stats tell the whole story. I mean, South Carolina absolutely shut down. And again, I point back to a drop pass by Jermail Kelly in yeah, the opening series. The we have not seen any confidence from South Carolina since that miss in that opening drive. And then, of course, uh, Craig leads his team down almost in an effortless manner to give them the 14 to 6 lead. They really haven't looked back, even with all the bizarre plays that have at times gone against them. And now a flag comes down. Well, it had to be a false start because the, the time clock had not gotten down. If you wait and hear what the call is. The dead ball, the illegal movement on the line by the offensive line, the five-yard penalty, first down. And with so much time remaining, 10.50 left, uh, if you're not coaching for the rest of this game, and this game's not over by any means, you begin to wonder just how they'll respond now to this kind of adversity. Because they have to be in a mental dungeon right now. Oh, boy. Well, their defense has been called upon to do so much. And they answered so many times. Bush now, up to the 17. And now you're going to hear some of the boo birds saying, hey, what are you doing that for? 17 points down, there's still 10 and a half minutes left. Go to hurry up and get things cranked up and going. You know, uh, this is where sometimes the quarterback will take a little deep breath right here. He's got the pressure off him because the score seems a little bit out of control, and all of a sudden he'll start throwing winners. Second down and 13. Right again in trouble. Down he goes, and a flag comes down. Well, I, there's two flags on it, and there may be a face mask penalty on this. I know there's a flag back in the line, but I saw a flag go down on the tackle, and I'm wondering if there was a face mask penalty. Marcus Washington, number 82, was running him down. The sophomore from Auburn, Alabama, backing up Ryan Taylor at that outside linebacker spot. I think you're going to hear a hold and a face mask. We have a face mask. On the defense, they're holding on the offense, offsetting time, second down. And a man who's uh, done a lot of 
Holding of the face mask and holding period. Dave Rowe. <laughs> Absolutely accurate. All those years in the NFL you spent, you did a little bit of that. Oh, uh, inadvertent face mask. <laughs> <so much. laughs> Let's go down to Bob Kessling, Bob. Yeah, the update on Craig, Damian Craig, he has a bruised left arm, but and it also has a cut on the arm, so they treated that. While they're doctoring, he says, give me the headsets. i got to talk to the guys upstairs. So he has no uh, whatsoever thinking he's coming out of this game. You know, you guys have talked a lot about the Auburn defense and the struggles with South Carolina's offense. Remember, Auburn's defense last in the SEC coming into the game. So this has got to be a huge confidence builder for them. Oh, no doubt. Absolutely. I mean, South Carolina was very confident that they could accomplish a great deal coming into today's game against Auburn defensively. And a marker comes down, and the catch is made by Fleming. He may have been interfered with by Larry Kasher, number 24. Yeah, I think Kasher would had an arm on him trying to get in front of him, and the Fleming still made the catch. True freshman from Pritchard, Alabama. Yeah, yeah. Bill Oliver's got to be pleased with the way his, his defense has played. And again, such mixing and matching, particularly in that secondary. Seemingly never with the same lineup starting in the same spot in the secondary. <laughs> There's the man that once called Terry Bowden Buster Brown when he was coaching at Alabama and yet uh, meandered his way over to the plains of Auburn to the enemy camp. Now he calls him boss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> calls him yes sir. From Buster to boss. Huh? That's right. <laughs> one easy step. I really enjoy doing games with Terry Bowden. I think he's one of the fun coaches to talk to. Very, as I've said before, very open, tells you when this team is a better team, tells you what the, the problems are. He doesn't try to hide anything. Very, very open. I think he's very candid. And uh, and willing to delegate authority to Oliver for that defense and say, you know, he, he's not done. He'll keep in contact with Oliver with regard to what his plans are. But uh, in no way does he Im impede on, on his, his authority in running that defense. Fumbled it. Yeah, but uh, the ground yeah. can't cause the turnover. Yeah. Well, at least uh, most of the time it can. I'll tell you the funniest thing I saw. I thought I heard Terry Bowden say when he's talking about his dad doing the hamburger commercial. Yeah. He said, "Now that's somebody who used to cheat us out of food when we were kids. <laughs> used to steal our food all the time." I said, "My dad would steal our food. You don't really want that hamburger. Give me that hamburger, son." <laughs> Bob Kessling. Talking about the heart and soul of this Auburn defense, it's 96, Jimmy Brumball right in the middle. He was an all-star nose tackle for the Tigers, but they needed him to move to end, so he does that. So in practice, he takes snaps at ends. Then with the second team, he plays nose guard. Third team, he plays the other end. So he's on the practice field every single minute, it seems like. Fred, uh, there's Pete Jenkins, the coach said, and he said Brumball is one of these guys, you can't get him off the field. He is a tremendous leader. And when you look at how hard this Auburn defense has played today, you look at Jimmy Brumbaugh. He's been all over the field and almost in on every snap. Uh, including that one, Bob. Up to the 31-yard line. It will be third down and five coming up. Now he comes out of the game. Yeah, eight, eight tackles today, two sacks. What more could you ask for out of him? Third and five at the 32. <laughs> Wright's pass incomplete. Calvin Owens late to break. Herman Banks there to provide coverage. And uh, the problems for South Carolina continue. Well, you know, did you see it? Yeah. I, I really felt that Wright was upset that they didn't go for it there. Well, he looked over to see. I, it, I almost thought he looked over to see if it was fourth down. Yeah. I really maybe he didn't know it was fourth down. I'm wondering because it's not the Anthony Wright that we've seen the confident Anthony Wright that we've seen so many times. It's almost as if he's lost his confidence in the pocket. He just he's throwing the outs rather than the uh, curls and circles and uh, just not being productive with it. Levitt's punt to Marquis Cooper where a fair catch is called at the 23 yard line and the Tigers take over there still. 7.50 remaining in what is a 17-point lead, but never did a lead of that margin look so huge that it does to South Carolina now. <laughs> Athlete of the week, linebacker state, <laughs> exercise science. And wrong <laughs> announcing breath. 23 to 6. Tigers with the lead and the football at the 23-yard line. Williams breaks a tackle and a marker down back at the line of
of scrimmage as he manages the 32 yard line. I thought Ben Washington had him in the back uh, backfield for about a, about a yard loss or at least right on the line. But the hold call is going to go against Auburn. It's going to negate the gain and put them deep. And you know what's interesting? Damian Craig stays in the game because they have one first team quarterback and they use him as much as they can use him. You see Ben Laird, number 14, on the sideline. He's their backup quarterback. And you know it's surprising because we, we just saw as we look at Laird, he's the backup. He's only two of seven. He hasn't had much of an opportunity. He signals in the plays. But when anytime a quarterback gets injured, you think right away, hey, this game is somewhat under control right now. Their defense is playing solid. Their off, uh, South Carolina's offense has not been to get in the, able to get in uh, the football game. Why not take Damian Craig out? Well, I just was took a glance at the stats, and uh, he needed 300 plus yards again to tie Pat Sullivan's record for five consecutive games at over 300 in the air. He has surpassed that. He's up to 321. So it wouldn't be to set a record or tie a record. Rusty Williams, Rusty Williams again. Boy, Errol Rochester really got on his horse after him. He's a backup to Corey Atkins, number 57. And he just nails him down the side, just goes and gets him. I just think that they I just yeah, I see him signaling in plays there but again I just think it's it wouldn't be bad to change your quarterback. This was a game that South Carolina absolutely had to win if they were to entertain any thoughts of being a bold team. You look at the way their schedule ends and uh, they needed uh, to beat one of the two teams either Mississippi State or Georgia didn't either and because of that. They certainly had to win this game against Auburn, and they've now obviously not put themselves in a position to accomplish that. Williams again has stopped. Uh, South Carolina will get Kentucky next week. Certainly uh, the problem for all the teams at the bottom end of the league trying to improve is that so is everybody else. Kentucky at the top of that list, then at Arkansas, then Vanderbilt, and of course the Kentucky game we'll have for you next week here. And then you close out with Tennessee, oh Florida, and Clemson. Oh, you, you get an open yeah. date after Tennessee. Yeah, that's right. That's that's nice, yeah. but uh, you'd yeah. rather play someone besides Florida after having met the Vols. Well, that's one of the interesting things is they go nine games into the season before they get their open date and have three squeakers as closers. Number one team, number what, ten team, and the uh, uh, Clemson team that's ranked high in every season. On third and 13, just a couple of yards off tackle. For Rusty Williams, and they'll punt away. Corey Atkins, who's been everywhere today, making that stop. Now, uh, Damian may have been in there, but uh, he did a little in that series. Well, it's it's clock management time, and that's what you want to do right now. Nobody knows that better than Terry Bowden, and that is to use the clock to the best of your advantage. But what a courageous day by that young man. He so wanted to play in this game, and in talking with his dad yesterday, Wally Burnham, he said. Man, he said, I'll tell you, Shane had zeroed in this game. This was going to be one of his marquee games. This is the game he shot for. And he said they have a rule. If they don't practice on Wednesday, they don't start. If they don't practice on Thursday, they don't play. That's a block. That ball was deflected. They definitely got their hands on it. But look at that. Even a quality roll, it turns out to be just a poor punt. Darren Brooker, I believe, 43, got through there and got a hand on that. So the Gamecocks will get quality field position at the 48 when we come back even with a block the punt nets 25 yards well that's the way it's been going Jared thought it was behind him it was well ahead of you Jared this is an SEC athlete he practiced you see Anthony right next to John Eason and Brad Scott he's done for the day Victor Penn who's yet to complete a pass this year comes in for him redshirt freshman from Miami Florida a disastrous day for Anthony Wright. Then sack. And again, that forward wall, Charles Dorsey, comes through. And there's no way that the nose tackle can come all the way around the outside and sack the quarterback, except Charles Dorsey does it. He's 91. See him right in the middle now. He's going all the way around the outside of the end. All the way around, and he sacks him. That just doesn't happen. Never happened when I played. Maybe I'm not as fast as Charles Dorsey. Six sacks on the day. And the defense has 21 this season to lead the Southeastern Conference. A banner afternoon for Brother Phil and his Auburn Tiger defense. Drag pattern to Boo Williams again at midfield. I think you get a feeling that 
perhaps besides just uh, some damage control for Anthony Wright in preparation for Kentucky next week, Brad Scott's got to make a decision in which direction he wants to go at that running back spot because uh, uh, neither Hambrick uh, nor Boo Williams or Moritz to this point have just jumped out yeah. and uh, and gotten anyone's attention. Well, we thought Boo Williams might do that, and I know he's practiced really well. But, you know, I, I look at Brad Scott, and I think he's got six freshman linemen that are absolutely oh, great yeah. prospects, tremendous prospects. Well, that's a tremendous pass by Penn. Right into the hands of Jermail Kelly. He's excited. Yeah, look at this. That's my first completion. It's about a 20-some yarder. And again, Kelly making a difficult catch, yeah. and he's dropped a few that were very, very easy to make. Yeah, look at this. Great concentration, great stretch out. I should say that's a second completion. Remember, he had that little dink to uh, Boo Williams on that, that little drag across the middle, but uh, that'll build his confidence a little bit. First and 10 at the 30. Kelly in the slot right. Williams tries to pop out. Down to about the 22-yard line. Ball pops free after he hits the deck. Quentin Reese, number 86. The sophomore from Birmingham over to make the stop. And uh, no interceptions, but no touchdown passes either for Anthony today. And, and not so much the stats or lack thereof, but just a... Uh, his decision making in key situations not up to par uh, for Brad Scott and uh, and this underdog team today in order to pull an upset. Boy, their defense kept them in so long. I mean, at halftime, we're looking at a game that's just incredible. Defense just kept them in so long. That ball was fumbled, but Penn did manage to get on top of it. Let's go back down to Bob. Tim, you know, you talk about one injury that can change around an entire season. Maybe it was the injury to Darren Hambrick, the outstanding linebacker, hurt in the first game for South Carolina. The knee injury, he is on crutches. He's been uh, trying to rally the troops today, but when you practice with one guy and he's supposed to be the spearhead of your defense, and suddenly he's gone early in the first game of the season, it is a terribly emotionally draining and really puts a lot of pressure on a defense to your group. No, it does. Penn's pass is thrown a bit behind. Ben Fleming and incomplete but to, to the credit of Wally Burnham's defense today going more with a nickel package and trying to at least contain Damon Damian Craig's uh, ability to beat you when flushed from the pocket I thought they did a, a marvelous job today I think I think his defense played outstanding you see there's Wally Burnham right there at the right next to the post to the left of the post in your screen I think his defense played outstanding defense I think they they were the heart today well there is Georgia back and that's a Mississippi State team that was riding a high off last week's win in Starkville. That pass incomplete intended for Jermail Kelly on fourth down, and so Auburn will get it back on downs. I think Georgia has served notice that uh, they are ready to challenge Tennessee when that meeting yeah, occurs. I know. That's, you know, the Tennessee people think, well, once we get by Florida, that's the pivotal game. And uh, yeah, you know, they've got they've yeah. got alliance on their minds. They're believing yeah. they can r run the table exactly and uh, and maybe even wind up in an alliance bowl. If not getting another opportunity provided uh, Nebraska helps out by losing and, and having another chance to shot it at the Gators. But Georgia is a much improved team. Ben Lair in at quarterback getting his opportunity from Hartwell, Georgia. Nothing doing on the ground for Embry. Well, Laird should he should get a chance in there. You know he's got there. It's a little bit of time left. A few reps. You take that snap. You stand out in front of a big crowd. Yeah. Uh, all of a sudden, Damian Craig becomes the signal. Yeah, and you know this is not what uh, Damian Craig would call a banner afternoon. I mean. Yeah, 24-39, 321 yards, two touchdowns, but he'll be very critical of his uh, performance today. He'll, he'll probably tell people, I, I should have done better. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's uh, very critical of himself. I think especially in that first quarter, he did not have a good first quarter. They just uh, they kind of floundered around, didn't get a lot of things going. There's uh, the illegal motion by the offense. But he didn't get things going. But but true to form, Damian Craig is one of those ones that just is one of those leaders that comes out and just takes charge. All right, they get Louisiana Tech. Oh, by the way, Louisiana Tech has a quality quarterback that's been leading the country, Tim Rattay. He gave yeah. Arkansas all they wanted 
last week. And then they get Florida of course and then the Razorbacks. Now that is a schedule I think that uh, you know you can point to the end and say well you may be looking awfully good. You may have uh, no losses or perhaps one loss going into Georgia Bama to close it out. That's not an easy task either to end with those two. Sinke Pennington up to the 20 yard line. But the, the, the fact remains Auburn has had some recent success. Some of the veteran players on this team remember what happened in 94 when uh, Spurrier came in and of course uh, only Bobby Bowden has had success in the swamp and oh, Terry yeah. Bowden has had success in the swamp. So th this is a team that has uh, perhaps a, a belief that they can handle Florida that other teams in this league frankly don't have at this stage. Well, this, this Auburn team is certainly a team that plays well against good opponents. We did that uh, Ole Miss game, and they just they just sputtered all day, kind of like they did in the first uh, quarter of this game. But then all of a sudden, they come up play against LSU, and you could not have played a better game than they did against LSU. Laird makes that stop. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. They, they've played in enough big games that you think that mentally they will be up to the challenge of a team like the Gators when that opportunity comes forward. Terry Bowden now is 5 and 0. And in good shape as he meets a, a good friend and a guy that he has much in common with, Brad Scott. As his Auburn Tigers win it by a final score of 23 to 6. For the Gamecocks, they'll have to go back to the drawing board before the Cats come to town next week. We'll be back. This isn't just a car. It's a sign of how far you've come. So if it gets damaged, who do you want on your side? At Nationwide Insurance, we guarantee that your car will be fixed just the way it should be. Because we wouldn't have it any other way. Nationwide is on your side. Just how strong is the Southeastern Conference? Strong enough to turn individuals into heroes and teams into champions. Again, our final score, eighth-ranked Auburn beating South Carolina 23-6. The Gamecocks fall to 2-3, and 0-3 oh in the Southeastern Conference, and Auburn is now 5-0 and, oh and looking awfully good for the short-term future in the Southeastern Conference. Dave, we touched on it at halftime. South Carolina came in with a plan offensively whereby they felt if they could control the football and the clock, keep Damian Craig off the field, then they'd be okay. In the first half, they really did do that. But again, one of the reasons why time of possession is, in my opinion, the most overused stat in college football, if you don't cash in, eventually those guys are going to beat you on the scoreboard. Well, exactly right. When you talk, look at a football game, that halftime was very, very close. Auburn went in, made some adjustments. They came out, and those adjustments worked. Yeah. They were able to complete passes. The Damian Craig got under control, and you saw the results of, uh, of his st stats. For South Carolina, they came in, made those adjustments, came out, and Anthony Wright just could not perform. He just didn't perform to what he needed to do. Well, let's look at the stats, and I think, again, you, as you look at them, the numbers really don't tell the whole story other than total yards, and that's where South Carolina just shut down and went into the deep freeze in the second half. And time of possession, there you see it. They yep. had roughly seven minutes, uh, the, the football seven minutes longer, just shy of seven minutes. Doesn't make any difference if you don't cash in. And they, they lost the ball on downs a couple of times, were forced to uh, go for field goals. Critical fourth down situation, short yardage problems continue to beset Brad Scott's team. Yeah, they, they affected him last week when they went for that fourth down and didn't make it against Mississippi State. And again, today they affected him. It's just, it's a game of inches. That's what it's been. But uh, a lot of highlights in yeah. the first half. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, uh, there were uh, field goals and opportunities for South Carolina to, to get the lead. Steve Florio has only missed one field goal try all year. And uh, the answer came to Karsten Bailey on the deep post. Yeah, the misread there by Brooks on the jump, and Bailey looks the ball in. They went up 7-3. to three. This was a fourth down sack that Anthony Wright should not have absorbed in your mind. Oh, no way should he. And this is a fourth down play, fourth down in about 10, and he makes nine yards. Gets a mark, and where the mark comes down, it just was up just a touch short, so they held. And we have the field goal that made it seven to six. Still have a heck of a ball game, and this is where you're you go in at halftime and make those adjustments. And Auburn's adjustments led them right down the field in the second half. And did they have rhythm? 
Well, nothing sets the tone like that first drive coming out of half. And you can see Tyrone Goodson takes that football in for the score. This is probably the turning point of the game. South Carolina intercepts the ball. They fumble it out into the end zone, the back of the end zone. It's a safety. It goes against South Carolina. gives Auburn the ball back. They go in and they score on the play. And uh, even after that safety, there was a fumble by Goodson. South Carolina had a chance, did not take advantage. Therein lies the difference in today's game. And we'll be back to wrap it up in a moment. For a sellout crowd at williams Bryce Stadium. And next week, our Jefferson Pilot sports coverage of the SEC continues with our Bell South SEC Game of the Week. The Kentucky Wildcats take on the South Carolina Gamecocks. Our executive producer, Jimmy Rayburn. Today's telecast produced by Roger Roebuck and directed by Ken Dennis. These are all of the people that helped make this telecast possible. Our thanks to all of them for bringing you the color, the pageantry, and the pop of SEC football. For Dave Rowe and for Bob Kessling and all of our crew, Tim Brando saying so long. You've been watching Jefferson Pilot Sports exclusive coverage of Southeastern Conference football. Good night. <laughs>